This is the Copper Crab Podcast. I'm Cheney Crab. I am Naveen Copperweiss, main host. Cheney Crab is the co host. <laughs> Direct support, Cheney Crab. We got a super <laughs> sick guest in the house, Brandon Bozio. What up? Yo, yeah. yo. How is it going, my people? Pretty good, man. How you doing? Can you hear our theme song? Yeah, it's pretty heavy. Y'all write that yourself? Well, you know, we only like do the heaviest shit. So. <laughs> you guys are only the heavy metal couple. <laughs> the heavy metal power couple. <laughs> only I mean, one. Get out, get out of here, uh, Christina Scabby and Jim Root. It's all about <laughs> Cheney Crab. You know what? And I, I actually thought about this yesterday. Navani. You guys are Navani. I've thought of that Yeah, before. we've always wondered what our, like, because all of our celebrity couple names suck. Yeah. Chavy. Yeah, fuck Benifer. Get Benifer out of here. Get I mean, Brangelina fuck them. out of here. Who fuck needs them? them? Yeah. I'm team Navani. <laughs> yeah. Navani we are or, or Chavine works. Ch- Chavine is good too. Yeah. I, I, I could dig that. But Navani, Navani just writes itself. You liking that yeah. one? Okay. All right. We'll go with that. Then. I think that's it. I think that's it, you know. All right. I mean, settle. Um, I dub, I dub the. <laughs> the now officially. I dub the. We were just, we were just practicing our British accents before the podcast, so this is a perfect. I dub the. Yeah, it's How horrible. It's the worst oh, thing ever. I'm Cheney Crab. I'm Cheney. Cheney I'm Cheney Crab. Cheney Crab. a nice cold picture of butt. Okay, <laughs> see you around. Whoa, you guys have drops? Dude, we got it all. We're professional as fuck. I've been meaning to do more, but I have... uh, I got a couple, dude. I got a couple good ones on here. I like it. I guarantee you I'm going to go ahead and set the precedent now because I'm always good at setting goals and then achieving them right yeah. so <laughs> that's a, that's how it works sometimes that's true. um and i'm gonna say that we're gonna have a good at least one good drop <laughs> from this podcast will it will generate I, i'm already predicting it oh it's definitely going right, to i'm down dude. i definitely yeah. think so but what it's have you been happen. what have you been up to man i mean we should <sighs> we should set precedent and say we go way back we yeah. used to live together in LA. Yes. We lived together in LA before we moved to Santa Cruz. And right. now we haven't hung mm-hmm. out, I don't know, since last Nam, probably. We'd be hanging out like this weekend. It was probably yeah. since last Nam, yeah. yeah. Or did you go exactly. to you went to Nam last year, right? Go yeah, exactly Nam. last Nam. It was it was a good old time. We we kicked it for a hot minute. I remember going to some party uh somewhere so you, you had the hookup dude it was like right before my stepsister was gonna play and we went oh, up to yeah. this fucking suite and just like had oh yeah yeah hella, no, okay. hella yeah. hors d'oeuvres and yeah. free drinks i was like this is the j- this is where you want to be <laughs> yeah, at yeah. NAM. yeah that was, was uh, like that was here. one of the best experiences at nam they had like the bombest hors d'oeuvres and you could go and order wine and everything for free and and everything, yeah. i think was, it was the yeah. it was some guitar company's party that i'd heard about earlier i don't yeah. know i think it was gator cases uh it might have been it might have yeah. been gator cases yeah. but i know they did that one year but that might have been the year before and then anyway it was maybe. great there was much people there but you know that's like the you secret kinda s- to nam though yeah. you have to like find your way into one of those parties and yeah, once you once have you to know s- you have to know somebody who knows somebody who can get you into that party. And then that one person ends up bringing a crew of like eight people. Yeah. And you can tell the people who are opening the door, like kind of disappointed. They're like, yeah. okay, like come in and drink our free food and yeah. free drinks yeah. that we're not yeah. really paying for. You know what I mean? Like, totally. That's me every now. Yeah. Yeah. You have to dude. take advantage of it. And, and that's, that's dwindled a lot over the years, especially because budget cuts are just <laughs> continuously being made more right. and more. Right. But like, whew, I remember the Sabian artist parties that they had. Yeah. Cause you've like, been going to NAM like your whole life, right? Yeah, pretty much dude. Um, wow. but I didn't, I didn't go to LA NAM again since like, like the first time again was 2012. Okay. Um, after I'd already moved back here. Oh, right. And right. so, yeah. yeah. And so, um, dude, the Sabian artist party, it was at this place called Timmy Nolan's. Now I think it's changed names, but it's some like Irish pub in Burbank. And they rented out the whole upstairs 
open bar, all this crazy, like Irish food and like, couldn't have been the worst idea ever because you had all these drummers, all these ragers. And the cool thing about it was everybody was sitting side by side. It was like Ariana Grande's drummer next to like death metal drummer next to like Jojo Mayer. You know what I mean? Like everybody's like drinking, breaking bread, chopping it up and stuff. (laughs) And, um, the, you know, the metal guys just start taking over and they're like, yeah, okay, course. we're getting sh- everybody shots of like some fucking really expensive fucking whiskey. And we're just it's like, we must've done six shots after everybody had already had all these drinks and stuff and gone him. <laughs> I couldn't imagine how astronomical the bill was if it was just like a flat rate for open bar up there. But like they had like, it wasn't just like, our old days of huffing it at the open bar at like Dim Mac where they only have house vodka <laughs> and you're drinking like cranberry juice and pineapple juice. That's all they have. They're like, this is all it's free. And we're like, okay, yeah. we'll take the free shit. So this is like, we got it all. We got the top shelf, gray goose, you name it. Damn. So, well, I guess that go, uh, we should probably mention what you're talking about. And when we, all of Danelle. I guess we didn't live together at, at the time, but we used to hang out all the time. And but we definitely went when we lived together. I think yeah. so. Not yeah. as much though, because that was it was a lot further at <laughs> right. that point. Yeah, it was know? way longer. It started drive. dwindling. Yeah. But we would go so, to like this free party every like the Steve Aoki guys bar. Yeah, and we went and to some had, sick shit there. We went to Skrillex. You yeah. remember the? Sk- Went to Skrillex there. That was, and it it's like a I, it's like a two hundred <laughs> cap room. It's like seeing Skrillex in the smallest venue ever. Yeah. Really fun. It was really off good. the yeah. good time. But we went to we would just that go. We would go like every week, pretty much. Remember? Yeah. I mean, well, you on on the Skrillex tip. I remember you guys just talking to me about it one day and be like, "Your birthday's coming up." We got a ticket, bro. We're going to Skrillex. It's Skrillex week, too, so it was his, like, birthday week. He was, like, playing shows all over the world. At the height of Skrillex's fame, yeah, yeah. at the end of 2011. Right. Or, no. Yeah, yeah, because we all there. crashed at the Animal House afterwards. Yep. But that was one fucking hell of a night. I was just <laughs> thinking about that, oddly enough, because I was thinking about we all did Molly that night. Full disclosure. You know, yeah. we're just going to say we're, we're, we're all adults we here. Uh, yeah, we did. But, yeah. We got it off a. Of- Limit well, stat, statute of limitations. Which I blur that out. I think you might should blur that out, dude. You got literally mailed in a in a nameless envelope, no, nothing on it. No, it was an envelope with like, like two, hoping, uh, hoping that this is good drugs and not fucking anthrax. Yeah. To be fair, that was ten years ago, and I would never do that now. But never. I'm, I know it's funny because when you're a kid, you're like, why wouldn't everyone do this? And as an adult, I can totally, re- well, I guess, you know, I'm still a kid, but you know, now that I'm older, I can still relate to like, why, or I can relate to why would anyone ever do that? That's insane. You're like, okay, take random powder from the internet, <laughs> yeah. put it in your body. Ingest no it. idea. But that was also well, before you- there was like a huge, uh, what's it called? Like uh, the fentanyl. Scared, well, the, the, you know yeah. what I mean? The, it was way before the thing that. Is, as you get older, you don't necessarily you. It's not that you wouldn't do ordering shit from right. Yeah. It's just you have friends that have Molly connects. You know it's what I mean? Like, as you get older, you, you meet real drug addicts. You know yeah, to, be, it, to be fair, we were like we were new to LA. You had just oh, moved God. back to LA. We didn't really have the best connect around. I'm sure if we would have like been ingrained in the society a little more, we would have yeah. had some good connections. I really but. hope my mom mom doesn't listen to this episode. My mom is for sure. I mean, fuck it. Your mom's like showing the family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this no, this one can't be seen by the bone, dude. Like, it won't. Like, Honestly, though, I, I, I think, so. dude, we've told kind of worse stories than this. Oh yeah, here. way worse. Stories. So. Well, they're about to get worse. We're yeah. just start. We're starting off. It's hot, just. You know? <laughs> I mean, we're starting off. We have to rip the bandaid off. But dude, that yes. was such a good night. I mean, yeah, a, I could obviously. It, it, yeah, we obviously were also way into Skrillex at the time, so it was yeah. just awesome. Yeah. I remember also seeing like Charlie XCX at Dim Mock before she got way huge. And, and who was the other chick? Uh, Yell. We saw Yell. We saw, we saw yeah, you and I saw Yell. It was so yeah. yeah. You fell in love with Yell that night. 
You were like, dude, I'm gonna marry it. that Yell woman. Sold me. I was ready. Dude. I thought that night me and Yell were gonna like, she was gonna come off stage and just grab my hand and like take me away. I, know, I, know, I, know. <laughs> I remember you being like, dude, I'm I'm gonna get her number. I, I or something doing, like that. <laughs> <laughs> my confidence was at an all time high. That it was great. That's um, what happens when you drink a lot. When that free bar is That's up. what happens when you have fucking free house vodka <laughs> democ for from hours of eight to nine. <laughs> well, here's another pr- a pro tip for struggling musicians such as us. We would bring, we would put a bunch of those little shots in our pants, you know, like oh, the little yeah. $1 UV. Sneak them in. We sneak call them in. sneak them in. Yes. I mean, I ha- buy I one UV, yeah, UV the blue, blue. And red UVs yeah. combined with that house vodka, like house vodka <laughs> yep. That was a fucking great combo. So that good. Was, that's undeniable. That's a class, dude. I'm, there, there's a meme for this one right here. Name, <laughs> name a more iconic duo. I'll wait and just like it's just UV blue, UV blue, vodka spray, red and UV blue. That's yeah. so good, dude. But My, you do that, you buy one drink and then pour that in. You're good to go. Yeah, you're good to go. You <laughs> spread it out. Yeah. Oh, it's it's amazing. And yeah, you save so much money. You know, we, we were so broke back then. It was yeah. amazing that we afforded Molly. But um, I, know. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know how we pulled it off. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It was a hundred bucks. It was, yeah, it was that's bucks. how broke we were. I remember exactly how much yeah, money it was. Yeah. yeah, you guys, you guys pulled together and hooked up your boy. And <laughs> I remember when I first did it, like, it, well, I was, I was feeling it kind of, I didn't like fully blast off, but like, there was that guy with that little uh, menthol yeah. vape yeah. spray. Dude, <laughs> I think that was the blue. first party I ever went to yes. where a guy had menthol. Where I, I, that's where I found out about menthol being awesome when you were on Molly. Oh, party's here. <laughs> Dude, I totally remember that. And he was blowing it in your eyes. He blew it in my face and it was like the most amazing thing ever. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I never thought I would love having a man blow this little fucking mint thing in my fucking eyes. But yeah, it turned everything into like cool water. It made it like so amazing. And it just took the trip to the next level. So Skrillex kills it. We go back to the pad and we're like, fuck it. We're going to do some more Molly and we're going to like buy these little <laughs> menthol things <laughs> from, uh, from our Vons. I, like, okay. Yeah, I remember that. I remember. <laughs> One o'clock in the morning and Naveen is tripping out because Naveen's coming down <laughs> and he's all panicking. He's like, man, I feel like a drug addict just going to the store. <laughs> and like, they know what we're doing, bro. And I'm like, who gives a fuck? This bitch is only used to seeing drug addicts. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's oh one my o'clock God. in the morning on a Saturday. Like she knows who's coming in here. Yeah. Like, so we only buy this menthol thing. We bring it home. I dip like the <laughs> biggest fucking scoop. I it was way bigger than I did last time. Yeah. Put it in my mouth. And then um, I'm like, okay, Naveen, you know, blow this stuff in my face, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Naveen goes as hard as he can. <laughs> <laughs> blows the whole fucking uh, thing. Oh my god! Sprays hot menthol <laughs> oil in my eyes. <laughs> like, oh. You're like, oh, sorry, oh bro. Like, man. Yeah, like, you were so sympathetic. Like, I was like, it's all good, dude. I, I, I know you didn't mean to. Or like, man. Well, Fuck, we're never doing that. Shit. I remember it and, uh, not being all good though. Like you're, no, you were, it like, was not good. And, That's like yeah. my yeah. memory from that night is your <laughs> eyes being swollen. Because I think no, Raver my. guy, Raver guy, probably like just barely yeah, did a she, little. She knew what he was doing. Yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he, he was caressing it. Yeah. Naveen doesn't know his own blow strength. He just fucking cranks yeah. that shit out, sprays the hot yeah. oil, <laughs> and the worst part of it wasn't even that. It was the fucking following four hours where I was buzzing out so hard on Molly. You guys are sleeping in your room. Uh, your brother is is on the in the kitchen laying down, and I'm in the couch, and I'm just like freaking the fuck out, <laughs> like blasting up oh in God. complete darkness, like listening to J Rock, just trying to calm the fuck down, and just like 
I remember I had to keep slapping and scratching my fucking leg. Because that, that's, that's, yeah. that's a real fucking speed. That's a good speed for all we know. Nice. The cut with speed. And um, yeah, that was a real ass moment. And yeah. Sean, like, falling more was like, Are you okay, buddy? <laughs> I was like, Nah, man. He's like, Yeah, I heard you. <laughs> I heard you over there. I was that's like, sorry, like uh, man. I'm going to have to rate this episode in C17. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Damn, well, no, no episode has ever gotten that before. Uh, and, then, and we're 15 minutes in. <laughs> anyway, Raiden, so dude, like, how how have you been? Yeah. What have you been up to? Because honestly, we haven't talked in a little while. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's been a really long time. It's been overdue. And, um, you know, I've been meaning to come up to Santa Cruz and do this shit with you guys in person. That'd be because I know. sick. Dude, I need so to fun. sooner than later, and I, I wanted I wanted my first appearance to be in studio, but you know we, we all have to make sacrifices every now and then, so yeah, I'm man. willing to appear on Zoom for the first time. But I think <laughs> once we break the seal, that'll just make it even more imperative. Yeah, that yeah I'm agree. there with with you guys. So yeah. what what kind of stuff are you doing these days, man? Like what's up with it? Well, I'm uh, I'm still working on music. Oddly enough, this is the least music I've played in my life. Like yeah. this year, I've played like. Barely any music. I've I've recorded some songs uh, with Chain Flower, oh, yeah. um, but it it's been strange from from start to finish because it kind of started out with you know me kind of parting ways with Fact Pattern and okay. I was going to do this OTEP tour in yeah, Australia yeah. in Australia and obviously the wildfires kind of put the kibosh on that and then had a lot of stuff <laughs> planned for spring and spring obviously put the kibosh on everybody yeah um right. so you know i was just like okay what what else am i going to do how am i going to take advantage of this uh you know and make this into uh you know a success story rather than a oh my god i just lost everything i lost all hope whatever yeah yeah I got my Twitch channel together. I, right. I made sure that was like first priority. I had some time off from work. And so I just went through all the process of going to offer up and, and let go and getting the, the right stuff I needed, doing the research, asking my friends what I'm going to need, uh, you know, to make this, you know, a worthwhile uh, investment right. and um, started doing uh, game twitches first, then slowly got my drum twitches together. Just right. kind of put the halts on the drum twitches for now, unfortunately, because I need mics. So yeah, yeah. Some more, more mics, I'll be ready to rock those again and I'll set it up in my studio but um other than that i've just been like working out an insane amount uh, oh, yeah, no, i know you look getting, ripped like, now kind of it's crazy jizzacked yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> hella jack uh, yeah so that's been a lot of fun that's been like a crazy journey uh just going from like i started a little bit before quarantine happened i was already on that track and then all that stuff just allowed me to keep hammering at home and and not really miss more than a couple days since February of, of working out. And I, it, it was a slow process of building it up and, and getting to where I am now. First, I started with greasing the groove stuff, you know, kind yeah. of Pavel Tatsulin's kettlebell, just doing like half reps, you know, and, and taking long pauses and then built it up to doing some functional bodybuilding stuff. I got a hold of from, uh, you know, Marcus Feely by way of my friend, Karrion Cross, WWE superstar, shout out to my man. Um, and, uh, started doing that stuff. That was, that was a, a big step, um, in the right direction. And then started doing this crazy Corey G fitness, uh, routine since a little bit before summer, like, like around June. And it's insane, man. Uh, I'm, I'm doing like two, three hours a day, you know, working Damn. out with abs and cardio. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Because it's just crazy, insane high reps. I'm only using 15 pound what bells, uh, 20 pound, 25 pound dumbbells every now and then. Yeah. I'm yeah. um, using light weights and just doing these crazy reps and uh, weight, then man. finishing off with, with lunging for time, which is another insane Holy thing. Shit. Like instead of running for cardio we yeah, do yeah. lunging so Whoa. i lunge 400 meters every day okay. pretty much i've only missed That's like a lot. couple days and it's wild it Damn. takes me probably about 12 minutes if i like do like deep lunges if i'm doing it for like time i can get done like nine ten minutes you know Still, but, 10 um, minutes of lunging is legit. that's a lot man that that's straining on your body yeah. but how yeah, how is how is the high rep thing been going 
for you though, because I, there's like this constant battle between high reps, low weight and high weight, low reps. Yeah, so do yeah. you, th do you think that it's working out better for you than, than low reps, high weight? Yeah. Oddly enough, you know, I mean, it, it, it works out better for me in more than one way because number one, it allows me to keep just using my home gym, which is, you know, just yeah, a yeah. couple of simple <clears throat> things really keep it basic. And, um, luckily my roommate likes to work out too. So our living room is basically our gym. It's, okay. <laughs> it's great. That's you know true. what I mean? We got the projector set up. I throw on like a UFC or wrestling and just go to town. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> um, you know, That's uh, awesome, man. yeah, the, the high reps have worked better for me, I think, because, uh, less chance of an injury you know yeah, like, yeah. at least the totally. least i've found right and uh, it kind of makes you laugh sometimes we're like wow like even though i might have just lifted a 15 pound or 25 pound dumbbell like i just did an insane amount of this stuff like yep. you feel really accomplished yep. by the end of the day and i mean i have never seen more results granted i've never been more consistent yeah yeah that's really what it's about never, it's just like yeah. work out a lot it doesn't yeah, yeah. Find matter what that you works do. For yeah. You. Yeah. Like, because yeah, exactly. I've always had the best results with just doing body weight. You know, I'm just doing me too, tons man. of pull ups, body and push ups, and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. But right yeah, now, I can't I, talk. I'm like, um, I'm I mean, not, I really like it. kettlebell workouts <laughs> were so sick for me as well. Just swinging a kettlebell is so yeah, fun. Yeah. But like, I, I found, I accomplished a lot just doing that. Whatever's oh, yeah, like absolutely. fun, you know, whatever's fun and keeps you doing it is what matters. Yeah. Oh, 100%. And you know, that, that's the great thing about this. He's always dropping kind of new workouts and different things. So I'm always doing different programs. It's, you know, some similar stuff, but a lot of it gets mixed up and changed up. And, and that I find is very important for me. Yeah. Um, just not doing the same thing over and over again, having something that, you know, I know every four weeks I've made an accomplishment. I've done this. I've, I've, I've gone on to the next one. You know what I mean? And um, then, you know, you feel like, okay, cool. I could start something new. It's kind of fresh. You're learning new techniques a lot of the time. Yeah. And totally. uh, I really, I think that oddly enough, because I, I just had like a rehearsal last weekend or, uh, you know, last week, I haven't played in probably two, three weeks. Yeah. yeah. And I just sat right into it and felt great. I was like, wow, this feels like so natural. Sometimes taking that step back and, you know, taking a break from your instrument really, really helps Definitely. kind That's of true. reprioritize things and, and, <clears throat> and allow you to look at it in a, in a new light. And not only that, but doing other things and bringing those into the, you know, the studio or, or the writing room or, or wherever. Um, like I found when I was doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai, yeah. doing those things, hyping up for recording the fact pattern album was <clears throat> so beneficial. Yeah. It was so awesome. And it allowed me to have this whole new outlook on my, on my instrument, my craft and, and really, uh, bring some new things to the table and, and bring a new set of discipline. Absolutely. Uh, to, yeah, yeah, to, to, to whatever I'm doing in life. So that I've found, now that I've forced myself, even through, you know, having insane days at work, uh, which I work a day job, a yeah, manual yeah. labor job, just like a lot of people do, yeah. you know what I mean? A lot yeah. of musicians. No, we, we, we talk about that a lot on here, about like day yeah. jobs. And it's, impor it it's important yeah. to emphasize because it's like, you know, there's a we have to make things work. When you play the kind of music we play, you don't make a shitload of money. And if you want to like really achieve things monetarily, you do have to have a day job. Yeah. It's a reality. Or achieve food. Yeah. If you want to achieve remember, food. I, rem I remember it blowing my mind when we first talked on the phone. I mean, this is like 2010, um, maybe 2009 even. Fuck. Yeah, uh, yeah. We were like, you told me you had a day job and I was like, Whoa, Naveen from animals <laughs> leaders has a day job. Like that's crazy, bro. Like yeah, it blew yeah. my mind, but you were like from, from minute one, just so humble and cool about it. Be like, yeah, it is what it is, you know? And you always yeah. have been like, you've kept that, uh, you know, as something very consistent. And I, yeah. I think that's super cool and super important to, yeah. Like let people know, like there's no shame in that. And honestly yeah, yeah. working this job as a mover, moving furniture is a fucking nightmare. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah it sucks. working but sucks. It is I, it's it is. the like, worst thing. I'm, I'm doing it's, some. It's, it's terrible. Working yeah, sucks. Yeah, but I'm, I'm doing something active. <laughs> uh, I'm getting stronger usually while I'm working. You that's know? true. Yeah, I that's bet. true. And, um, 
and I don't have to take my work home with me a lot of the times, you know what I mean? It's just, all right, you go the day. And yep. sometimes you get out pretty early. Sometimes you only have a couple things to move. Other times you're there until fucking 11 o'clock at night and you yeah. want to blow your brain skis out. But, yeah. uh, you know, you just got to keep fighting. Uh, so, yeah. It dude, is a fight, uh, dude. That's what life's yeah. all about, dude. Fight. Yeah, you just you, and, and honestly, if I didn't have this job right now, I'd be super fucked. Like I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. super stoked that I had it because if I relied on playing, like I know a lot of dudes who have had to move back in with their parents, like successful musicians that are like I know. on good tours, and you're like, wow, this guy's made all this money uh, playing drums and this and that his his you know entire adult life, and now he's having to suffer because he doesn't know or wasn't able to adapt or, or yeah. what have you, you know? Um, so yeah, like realistically I am grateful for it, you know? Absolutely. I mean, it's hit, it's hit me. Like I've seen that everybody in the music, like the music communities get, got hit hard, very hard. Right. And harder I'm stoked anybody. that Chaney I mean, and I always kept our, you know, little day jobs going. And it's yeah. like, I mean, it sucks cause we didn't get to play any shows or anything like that, but we've been all right. Yeah, yeah, it's it's actually greatly benefited us in the transition from uh, normal life to quarantine that we were able to stay afloat. Like, we pay a lot for rent. We live in fucking Santa Cruz, California, it's, and we have yeah. a three-bedroom house. It's really expensive to live here. But yeah. luckily, we have had jobs the whole time, and we are able to just transition easily. And I'm an essential worker. Naveen didn't really lose work. Yeah, so I didn't work for a month. And that was sick. It was so, like the best month. Yeah, yeah. Same, dude. Same. yeah. <laughs> that was the sickest. Like a month and a half off, got paid for it. I was yeah. like, Durr. yeah, I didn't get paid, but I, 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 I didn't yeah. get paid, but I was like, fuck it, you know. Oh, see, we got we got a small business loan, uh, so I got hooked. Up. I got paid like maybe like uh, half of my average or like half of my average salary, some shit like that. Like it was it was what it was. I, I, yeah. I was willing to accept it because yeah. yeah, that, that month and a half more than anything allowed me to get everything I needed to get done, done. Absolutely. Like I just fucking Dude. cranked it out. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that's yeah. been honestly like me and Cheney, our mindset this whole time through the Corona thing. It's like, I haven't once sat around and been like, Oh dude, this sucks. Like, no. it's like whatever dude, yeah. fucking, you know, like you, it's like, okay, well, cool. I can't go play shows. Well, I'm going to fucking get in the best shape. Yeah, it's like, I'm going to fucking, yeah, it's go do time. Something that it's I go been, time exactly. regardless like of I, what's going on. It's you know. like we, you have to, everything that happens in, in the world, you just have to adapt. That's what life is all about. If you want to succeed is adapting to whatever comes exactly. your way. And I feel like we've adapted pretty fucking well to this exactly, new, yeah. uh, you know, the current reality. Yeah, well, 100%. Um, you know, I like to say it ain't no hill for a climber. Yeah, exactly. Fucking, you know, I, I 2020, like we handled it. It, yeah. it is yeah. what it is. Like some people are crum like, I don't know, dude. You see people, especially like with the political posts every day, they're just it's like, there's finally it's something to complain about, something to freak out about, whatever side it is. It's, they just, yeah. they're hounding each other all the time. I know. It's just like, man like finds like i don't know man maybe, i'm like imagine if you, you don't took, have anything better to do dude, like imagine if you like, took that fucking energy that you're putting into like your political post and they probably went and read a bunch of articles and spent like two hours or a couple hours freaking out it's yeah, like dude you could have fucking just done scared. a two-hour workout you could have just yeah. and then i'm sure someone's gonna be like oh naveen that shit matters or whatever it's like no it doesn't Dude, you know what I mean? You're on Facebook fucking arguing. It doesn't matter. Well, I think that there are certain points when it Straight matters. Up. What it what, when it doesn't matter is when you're on Facebook arguing with people all fucking day. I'm yes, like that. going out and you know doing your part matters, but the the complaining and having political discussions. There's nothing wrong with that either, right? Not, nothing you know, wrong but. with it at all. But dude, there's a certain point where you're you're becoming like mentally ill with this like political disease yeah, and that's all you focus your fucking time on if if it was spent in you know some hobby playing guitar most of the people on my facebook or instagram are musicians and it's like totally, dude you're yeah. sitting here arguing about politics instead of practicing your instrument getting better at something you know it, it's wasted time exactly it's it's really brutal it's really brutal and i've I've noticed it more than anything when I noticed that, oh, no matter what you post, somebody's going to fight you. Like, yeah, fight with you. Yeah. Somebody's going to argue. Somebody's going to try and bring you down. Even if like, oh man, my friend had this fucking amazing post. Eddie Torres, shout out to the rock and roll beer guy. You guys, I think you guys know Eddie. Oh yeah. Um, Hell yeah. yeah Eddie rules. Yeah. 
Yeah, so he's like, hey, I just like, it was like leading up to election time. He's just like, I just want to let everybody know, no matter who you voted for, no matter what side you're on, I still love you. I'm on team human, like blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, okay, cool, great. You would think they're like, that's super neutral, super yeah. like, yeah, no. I love everybody. No, people are still like, oh, complacency is fucking, <laughs> you know what I mean? Complacency is compliance or whatever. It's just like, Oh, that's Jesus not even Christ. fucking complacency, though. That's yeah, willingness to that's willingness to have a conversation with yeah. anyone who comes your way, which let's be real. Having an actual conversation with people is the only thing that can actually change their mind. You're not exactly. going to change someone's mind by fucking arguing with them on the Internet and calling them an idiot and an asshole and telling them and invalidating everything that they have to say. You, yeah, you, yeah, with links and by like um, correcting yeah, their grammar. Sick, dude. Like, yeah. And being like, uh, <laughs> you're, you asshole. Yeah, you I, and I was throwing, ask. I'm not even going to, I'm done with this argument, okay? Yeah. And honestly, <laughs> uh, like, I've come to because sometimes I've you know in the past I've put a couple spicy things out there on the internet fucking with people. Bro, we we've both been <laughs> fucking on the bad end of spicy political but comments. Like, so. Now I'm just like, you know what, dude? I don't want to be associated with. Like any, like that's not my thing. You know, my, yeah. I've kind of had this realization. It's like, okay, my thing is to put out cool music, good videos, you know, stuff like that. And honestly, dude, you maybe straight stuff, up had like a fucking like Sid Artha revelation. I did, like, dude. Yeah. I did, dude. Like the golden child. Totally. Over here. I did, dude. That's I was so like, real. you know what? Like all. I even do it with what I'm thinking about. You know, I'll be like, if I'm thinking about something more than like a, a couple minutes, I'm like, you know what? This isn't even worth thinking about because that's energy, you know? Yeah. And now I'm just like, okay, my, I'm only about music. That's it. So like, if I catch myself thinking about something for more than five minutes and it's not music, I'm like, okay, dude, you need to shift your, your thinking over, to, over, you know? And like, everything I do is in line with that now. You know, and I've been doing yeah. that for about like a month and dude, I've seen results just the same as working out. You know, it's the same exact idea. It's like you put in that effort with a specific goal in mind and you're going to get that result. So if you're yeah. online, hey, I'm going to go online and I'm going to fucking make posts and stuff and argue with people. I mean, that's cool if that's your goal, you know, but a lot of people don't do that. They're just, they just get caught up in it, right? And I'm like, yeah. okay, leave the politics and all that stuff to the politicians your boy's going to be over here posting videos about fucking music and shit like that yeah. and writing sick music. And that's, that's my thing. That's it. That's, that's and I'm actually gym. neutral. And you know, it's, I'm actually <laughs> neutral. I'm not saying I'm neutral when I'm not. No, you I'm actually neutral. are. And it's not yeah. something that you were in the past. And I, I do think yeah. like this whole Siddhartha revel revelation that you're talking about, like <laughs> it actually, it's very noticeable in Naveen because it's like, he's, you've, you're so much more calm than you used yeah, to be. Yeah, you got a ponytail. <laughs> yeah, I know. Look at him. It's just full blown hippie. <laughs> yeah, he's straight but, up. He went Indian. He went full Indian. <laughs> Which is no, I mean, dude, that stuff funny. really helped me, this, man. Like, it really did. Seriously, I mean, just you, you, you were like way more impatient in the past, and like you're, you're yeah. way less angry than you used to be. I don't know that's, how. To thank you. That's something that I'm actively, you know, been working on, like getting in the car and like road rage. Like yeah. so many times, I'll be like this idiot, and then I'll be like. You know what? Like it is what it Doesn't is. Like matter. we've yeah. all been idiots. Yeah. Like I've been yeah. an idiot plenty of times in the in the car. You know what I mean? I know. Like, I, know. Fuck, I, know. I know. Especially when driving, it's like, dude, okay, yeah. I don't know where I'm. Like, so a lot of the time when I'm driving, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going because I'm yeah. going to someone's house to put up their fucking blinds, right? Yeah. And so you're it's like, yeah, that you're late because of yourself. You're late for your own reason, and now you're blaming it on this guy who's not driving right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Something like that. You know so, what I yeah. noticed right. though? I, like I've been taking the van to work for about maybe the last six months, and dude, people are way more lenient with the big van. Like they don't fuck with me. <laughs> oh yeah. Because I got ladders on the roof and shit, and they're just like, yeah. all right, this is like some worker. He's this like, guy you know, needs he business. Just, like, I don't even put my hazards on, and I'll just like slow down real quick. And people, they hardly get mad at me anymore. But when I was in the car, motherfuckers used to, oh, man. It was, oh, yeah, man. They got no forgiveness oh, for cars. Dude. But now I think that's also kind of a, a post-COVID thing, right? That's you know, true. I, yeah. Like during COVID thing, people like, oh, these poor people are working. I'm just out here getting a fucking latte from <laughs> yeah. Starbucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, like I said, dude, for us, the COVID thing 
Dude, it's been it's been great. It's been yeah. great. I, I hate, hate to say, to say it. it. I, feel I don't. I, I, feel, yeah. I feel like an asshole as those yeah. words come out of my mouth, but it's like it actually has been great. You're honestly yeah, one yeah, of the first people I've talked to who's had that op- opinion. Like, yeah. A lot of people are like, you really are. Oh, blah blah blah. This is the worst. I've done. And and dude, I like I'm not trying to sound insensitive because I get that a lot of people have died from COVID. I mean that's yes. really <laughs> shitty. Like for sure. Absolutely. But I, like. And- for and me, people pers- are still suffering like after effects and all this shit. I of mean, course, yeah. go on, right? Well, obviously, we're no COVID deniers. Yeah, but, yeah. But like, uh, like for me we're personally, not good time deniers. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, and like if I was sick from COVID or whatever, and someone said they had a good year, I'm not going to be mad at them for it. It's like yeah, they that's awesome. Are they doing their thing? And that's good. And, and honestly, now, dude, dude now yeah. so I'll go on Facebook now and I'll see people. Oh, you know. You know, we, I'm not even going to post any music because COVID and blah, blah. I'm like, sick, dude. That's just more opportunity for me, baby. I know. You know what I'm saying? I know. So many, so many people are saying that. So many people are like, I'm going to wait. Are, are you guys feeling like you should wait this out so that, you know, we can do it when touring happens? And it's like, dude, no. the internet exists. Yeah. Like, Bands yeah. get big off of Facebook and Instagram yeah. and Twitter all off the fucking videos, time. Yeah. Why is it different now that COVID exists just because some people can't tour? Not everyone who is successful was touring exactly. in the first place. You got to, yeah. like what you were saying, uh, adapt, you know, and that's yeah. seriously what it's about. And you see certain people who are so good at adapting, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I really, I like to talk about Jocko Willink, dude, you know? Yeah. Like oh, that dude, guy is like he's no. like a, he's like oh I was like a ca- caveman no but I mean like I'll look at him and it's like he didn't know anything about the internet or social media like three or four years ago yeah, you know Joe Rogan told him like yeah like oh, hey, hey get to Twitter and he's like all right yeah. I'll do it and it's like dude he like has this way of just being like humble and just like okay I'm gonna learn how to do that and I'm just like yeah. dude I want to be like that well, you know I'm not he, like sitting there bitter like. Because he could be like that, right? Like, look at all these other motherfuckers getting all big on Instagram, and, like, I don't even know what I'm doing. But, no, he's just like, hey, I'll figure it out. Cool. Like, that's what we're doing now? Okay, I'm going to do that. And, like, that's his attitude, and I want that attitude. There's a thing that I saw happen before my very eyes, because I'm old enough that I saw the transition from, like, you know... Uh, bands used to be able to tour and that's how they would get big. And then, th- then the internet came along and bands started getting really big on the internet. The first band to me that I remember getting huge off of the internet was Job for a Cowboy. Oh, yeah. So... Was that, is that a... <laughs> did you have that drop That's, ready? that's new Job for a Cowboy. <laughs> it's not Job for a Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, I watched, I watched so many people deny that that was a way to to help their band out and say fuck that i'm not getting on the internet or fuck okay. that i'm not using raise, click tracks li- raise your hand if that fucking song was your myspace song at one point because for real like i had him probably mine. i had him in my top eight for sure but it wasn't my uh, song wasn't my no, song i had that song as my as my profile song at one point i was like this is <laughs> this is the jam dude the everyone saw that video <laughs> fucking everyone saw that video and jfac got huge off of it and it's like yeah. there were a lot of people who refused to get on the internet they were like that's not gonna help me or when instagram came along they're like i'm not gonna do that and you know what i've seen those people suffer because they refused to adapt to this new world of being known on the internet and because it seems cheesy if you're like a purist you're like fuck that i don't want to do that that's not cool but it's like what do you want to do be the the cool guy for the rest of your life or like help yourself out a little bit and do what you want to do yeah. Or find a way to make it cool. Yeah, find, exactly. Ex- find exactly. a way to make it cool. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. That's that's how I felt about Twitch. You know, I felt like okay, there's some people who know what they're doing. There's some people who are cool out there, but like, there's a lot of like geeks, straight up yeah. twerps out there. Exactly. And like, I'm gonna take over. Like, I'm more entertaining <laughs> than them. I'm like, like, I know this game better than they do. Like, I know the the history behind it. I know this and that like fuck that and so if you feel like there's something that you you think is oh this this isn't good enough for me or whatever blah 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 put that chip on your shoulder and fucking make it work you know what I mean find a way to make it work that's for you that's right man sometimes that's the greatest sometimes hate can be a hell of a motivator tell you what <laughs> I, I know I agree yeah dude. and like I I think about this a lot because. I have a lot of friends that are like my age, you know, like 35. And it's like, <clears throat> we were in to music like just right before the internet started picking up and everything. 
And I'm just like, just make it your thing. Like, you like expressing yourself through making riffs or guitar, playing whatever, your band, right? But it's like, okay, the way that you used to do that was you got on tour opening for bands and you won the crowd over and da- like that was cool sure but it's like that's not what they do- that's not what people do now now yeah. you have to make videos and be on the internet and and just get into that you yeah. know that's just another form of doing your art and if you really stop and think about it the internet thing is fucking killer and i used to i used to say that out loud because jfac got super big like when animosity was a band and, dude, I witnessed tons of other bands all jealous, you know? Like, oh, they're just big because of MySpace or whatever. And I was like, well, wait a minute. Like, okay, they didn't have to do, like, a billion shitty-ass fucking tours like Animosity did, and they got big and then went on tour? I was like, that's pretty cool. In my yeah. opinion, they're yeah. winning. We're stupid. You know People what I mean? People come to their shows? Like, what? Totally. They didn't have to, like, <laughs> earn that audience base by performing beforehand? Like, uh, yeah. Dude, and I, and I remember... It was. it was like, oh, yeah, you were the opening band, so now I'll come see you, like, next time you guys come yeah. in town or whatever. But now it's like, nah, this band sucks. Like, we're not even going to show up for this band because we've already seen all the exactly. videos on YouTube. We've seen them either bring it live or be super whack live. And you yeah. know what I mean? Like... It is what it is. And, so, and that's the other thing. It, but, you know, it's it's helpful and it's hurtful. And, and yeah, it, it, it could be used in many ways, right? Like, yeah. I'm sure there's miserable performances of every one of us out there on the internet that we're just like... <sighs> oh, dude, there actually it. is a, a video from Austin at Emo's. <laughs> That one of me, that, yeah, of me like fucking up a song with animals. Are you train like, wrecked? Train wrecked. Stopped. Blue, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. That was uh, what was it called? South by Southwest. Yeah, yeah South by Southwest. Which is another yeah. fucking nightmare. Like you're gonna get the most. I got so just annihilated. Yeah. Annihilated. Like that I remember was, actually dude. that show. Like I was already drinking, and we played at like eleven thirty. Like I remember having like afternoon. Yeah, I remember having <laughs> the like, morning. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was like, okay, eleven thirty no, at I night. Mean, that's right. You, guys you were there. Later. No, you were like, there. Well, I was, I was for sure there because I, I stayed at your house. Blowing no, that I, song. For I sure. stayed at your house and I and we made pasta carbonara. You remember that? Dude, yes, bro. I fucking <laughs> think about that all the time, bro. Like this is like. These are like family forging moments, bro. Like the fucking wild shit that we went, me getting super fucking drunk and almost starting a fight with Eric Moore. Yes. You know what I'm I mean? Really like, oh, okay. what'd you do? Right, what'd you that do? Was, that was like at oh, I think 2 I've heard p.m. This. That was like early in the day. That was. Yeah, that, yeah, that was. It. Oh my God. <laughs> for, sure, for sure before like three yeah. o'clock. I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Was, I was there. That was great. Oh, that was dude. the best. Why did Tram yeah. play? How did you almost start it? Oh, Tram. I'll tell you what happened. I forgot about I'll you. tell you what happened if you want. Yeah. We can tell we can both tell our each side of the story. You know All right. What I mean? Let's okay. hear it. Um, Let's hear this what is actually I think there's a beautiful part, you know, there's there's a big learning experience in this story. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> big time learning experience. So um I had seen Eric Moore beforehand play at Fun 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 Fest, uh, with like suicidal tendencies and was like, This is why. I was I was hating on Eric Moore. I had seen him live and was like, man, like like on YouTube, I thought he was the shit. I was like, dude, this guy's fucking sick. Like, this is gonna be so fun to see. It was like gonna be a highlight of my night. But like he, I don't know, maybe I was just because I was right behind him and saw everything he was doing, and it was a lot of, you know, he's a big guy and not not wanting to expound a lot of energy. He's like doing a lot of tapping. Uh, so yeah, like, that's what you said. Like, You're like, oh, you don't hit hard enough, like, bro. You don't hit hard, bro. I had this <laughs> in my heart. I had this in my heart that I had to tell Eric Moore that I didn't think he hit hard. And at the same time, too, I had put together <laughs> Tram. I had fucking put together Tram, and then they foist like I got foisted out <laughs> or something fucking <laughs> happened to where they're, they're just like, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and go with this Eric Moore guy instead because he's okay. Like so wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, wait, tell that yeah, story. Wait, wait a minute. So did you have a little bit of you had like a little bit of vendetta there? Wait. Oh, also, just heat, clarify, clarify for me. You began the band of Tram. No, no. He yeah. introduced Adrian to. Oh, Adrian. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I have we a story were, about Adrian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fucking that guy. 
Yeah. That guy, we could go on forever about that guy, but we won't. Um, <laughs> I, had, yeah, I, had, I had jammed with him and I was like, hey, well, let, let's put together. Uh, he's like, I want to put together this trio for Nam. We had to put together this group. Like this companies want me to play and this and that. Like I want you to play. I've told them about it. We'll pay, you know, they'll fly you out. We'll, we'll get paid this and that. I'm like, okay, great. Cool. Sounds good. Who do you, you know, uh, who do you think should play guitar? Well, I'm like, oh, this guy Tosin, like he's the sickest. Like I just met him, you know what I mean? Like, but like we're Tosin and I were like acquaintances, you know what I mean? We wouldn't kind of call us friends yet, but we'd known each other enough to where I was like, I'm, I'm going to hit Tosin up and see if he wants to do this thing. Like this could be fun. And so like we put it together, we book shows, we do all this shit. And like Adrian just flakes big time. And then I guess Go in the figure. meantime, he's, yeah, I guess in the meantime, he's like, oh, we should get Eric Moore to fucking play with us because Eric Moore is the sickest. Like, why not? Well, I, I would hire Eric Moore to play instead of Rain Bozio any day. You know what I mean? <laughs> and well, I don't know about that because there's different guys for different gigs yeah, and everybody's really unique. Are. And good in their own way. I shouldn't put myself down like that. I'm just trying to put Eric more up and say, like, he's obviously amazing, right? Dude, are you kidding me? Come on. There's, there's yeah, no and, and argument. And a super there. nice guy, too. Super nice guy. And I'm just, I have this little chip on my shoulder. You know okay. What I mean? Oh, it's I'm, making a little I'm, more I'm, sense to me now. I'm, I'm, I'm 21 <laughs> years old. I'm drunk as fuck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had just yeah. gone to this Pepsi party. This is my the first Pepsi. Time no, we why. went to Pepsi. We went to yeah. Pepsi. This was the I first. Know, this was when Naveen, Naveen and I had just started dating. Yeah. I think yeah. so. We were yeah. like texting. Yeah. No, the I was whole like time. showing Rain and like pictures. Like, yeah, we were girl, texting like, the, like, the whole girl. time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I remember <laughs> you were like, "Hey, dude, we're gonna go over to Pep this Pepsi thing," and you yeah, and I yeah. went over to Pepsi, and it was like they had an open bar. You get like any mixed drink bar. with Pepsi. Oh, of course. Oh, Everything. with Pepsi. So it was like cranberry juice, Sierra Mist, Pepsi, whatever the fuck. And it was. Yeah. Man, so we did we that. Were, and that was, like I said, this is South by Southwest. This is early in the day. In the heat, I'm thinking like 11, 30, 12 p.m. Yeah. Because this tram was on at like 2. And I was like, hey, yeah. we got to go catch tram. Yeah. yeah, and I was like with some trying to mac on some chick drunk as fuck. So I'm like, later, guys, <laughs> I'll see you guys over there. <laughs> Actually, I think it was just I, you and me, straight up. I think um, it was just I, me. And I, you. I, I met up with some friends there. Okay. okay. So, um, right. but well, yeah, because uh, I, I remember specifically macking on this chick real hard and being really like sloppy drunk and just being like, <laughs> "I think you're so beautiful." <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. So wh- you guys leave, and I just keep pounding them. We're doing. I'm doing tequila and tecate oh, together, together at once, and just. The two I must have had eleven drinks by the yeah, time I left. <laughs> like this would kill somebody, but probably should have killed me at the time, honestly. And um, no, it shouldn't have, uh, but it <laughs> might have. You know what I mean? That's, that's, I, yeah. I need to watch the way that I word certain things. Yeah, me too. I'm not, I'm, not all my facilities are, are about me right now, um, but. Uh, we go, uh, oh, yeah, so I, I, I go and I'm like, hey, where are you guys? They're like, Tram just finished playing, sweet. I go over there and I'm like, I just, I have that fire in my eyes. I'm like, Eric Morris. Somebody, you're like, I'm going like, to this guy. He, he was saying something about like, I, I can't remember what, he was bragging about something. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to allow you to brag. Like, <laughs> I, I have to put you down. <laughs> because, like, I, you did wrong on me by tapping. So, like, I got to let you know. Like, that was that was my mentality at that time. And, uh, yeah, I just, I started talking to him. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, you're a good player. But, like, I wish you would just hit a little harder. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? I hit hard as fuck. Like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I was like, I, was I like, don't know I that. Saw you. Did you see the show, the tram? No, show? I didn't see tram. But yeah, I yeah. saw I saw him at Fun 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 Fest with Suicidal. I was like right behind him. So I was like, bro, I was legit. I watched you tap. Like, don't lie to me, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> and then we're just getting into it. And I'm like, Damn. I'm I'm probably about Eric Moore's height, maybe a little bit taller, but like he's four of me at this time yeah, probably yeah. you know what i mean like easily could have just rolled forward on me and and collapsed my lung like if he wanted to <laughs> you know what i mean like no I, he was like, being funny this. dude he was making fun of you he yeah, was like yeah. and then he, he was like oh no you don't like, you don't he's like you don't deserve the name Raiden. all right that's way too cool for you i'm gonna call you brandon like, you're brandon <laughs> he's, like, he's like your name is too bad <laughs> 
<laughs> You're not good enough Your for the name. Is and I, I, dude, I watched the whole that's thing. An insult. Dude, I watched the whole thing, but I, I stayed like 15 feet away, and I was just like, "Yeah, I, I, like, I don't want to get involved." Dude, this is I would not, not have good, come dude. close to that. Because honestly, no, that I, tram show was fucking amazing. Like, I started crying during the show. I was like, "This is, <laughs> it was amazing." Yeah, like, you yeah. Suck. Right away. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I was like, I just saw the best thing ever. It's yeah, amazing. meanwhile, Naveen's texting me like, "I just saw tram. It was fucking life changing. <laughs> yeah. Best thing like, I've ever one seen." Hour. One hour later, he's like, uh. Raynan just died. <laughs> Raynan got killed by Eric Morton. <laughs> no, hilarious. <laughs> Dude, yeah. those are like, that's so, like one of those moments that I'll just never forget. That's, I'm oh, so dude. glad it happened. Yeah, yeah, it was, that was so embarrassing. And then I like went and posted on the internet about it right oh, away. Oh, God. That's what you Damn. Oh, I took no. it online, dude. Dude, what, bro, I was a drunk, petty 21 year old. You know, <laughs> fucking, like, what, 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 do you, what do you expect, bro? This is, this is the day, right? And I, I had a mega chip on my shoulder. I had all sorts of problems and issues and things <laughs> I was dealing with. And I was just fucking getting it out. And so I went on fucking Eric Morris, a little bitch. Blah, blah, blah. Damn! <laughs> I didn't know it was real beef. I yeah, didn't either. No, it was it, for me. It was fucking real. To, like I legit, <laughs> I post this thing. Blah blah blah. I have like a bunch of people commenting, be like, "Yeah, fuck him." This and that. I'm like, yeah, <gasps> "These guys on my back." And then like Dave Elitch comes in. He's like, uh, "You should probably watch your mouth, bro." <laughs> Damn! <laughs> and like that snapped me out of it. And I was like whoa like thank you i sent like a message to Dave Elish and was like hey man like i really appreciate like you kind of like making me realize like it is kind of stupid what i'm saying like yeah, yeah, yeah. i probably should like watch what i say like not yeah. not a bad idea yeah. and um he was like all good man whatever and then i sent a message to eric moore right after and was like hey man sorry about that like i was that legit i got on the bus to uh, like after I saw Tram, and then the next time I woke up, I was in my room, like in my bed. Yeah. Oh, God. So like, I don't remember getting off the bus, walking like through this treacherous like gate thing that I knew I had to like make like steps over. Like I somehow got it in, unlocked the door, shut my door. Like I don't know how any of that happened, but I woke up hours later feeling like absolute shit. Yeah. I like, called my dad. <clears throat> I was like, Dad, tell me about a time that you were fucked up and like you insulted <laughs> somebody or whatever you know what I mean and he just goes does your dad on, do like, that well. does your dad tell you about like if you call him and ask him to tell you about a time to make you feel more comfortable does he do that um okay like not necessarily in those words but like yeah like I've I've had situations that I've looked to him just for advice or just problems you know as, as anybody would kind of look to yeah. their father yeah. um and be like oh you know this gig like didn't happen or this happened or whatever like what like what did you do in that situation like tell me you know just so i can kind of know or like how you know maybe learn from your mistakes etc blah, blah, totally. blah. and i mean he's it's he's been on public multiple times talk trashing guys all throughout i mean throughout until he was in his 50s he was really who did, shit, you know? <laughs> who did he <laughs> trap i guess a big really? bozio thing right Dude, there that's, bozio really family weird. Tradition. that's really weird though because if Haters. i have ever seen if i've ever seen video or when I've, I think I met your dad one time, but when I'm, he's just like a very nice, like I would never assume that about him, that he was very bitter. Like backhanded compliments. Well, first of all, ego. Ego is yeah. a fucking massive thing, especially when you're that talented. Yeah. When you're that much of a creative genius, and you know what I mean? Like he's a fucking. You've I like always been say, like, in that, Frank Zappa's band? Just that, tell, yeah. that <laughs> tells you about like the fine line between genius and insanity. Like I always say, I know firsthand because I know my father's a genius and like, yeah. I know how insane he is. Like not to say he's unmanageable or whatever, but like, oh, that, yeah. that's part of the game because we're all slightly geniuses. We're all slightly insane. Right. Yeah. We just, it's, it's two yeah. varying degrees and, and you can right. see it, right. especially like that scale goes with the talent scale. Most of the time it's like, what yeah. the fuck is going on here? Yeah. Um, so yeah, he would like go like, I remember him saying I would rather hear like somebody had, he just played on this album with Jordan Rudis from dream theater, yeah. like some session album. And you know, my dad thinking I'm, I, I want to make it all about me and my solo drumming and, and my whole thing. And, and you know, I'm better than this or whatever. This guy asked the question, Hey, you know, what was it like to work with Jordan Rudis? And my dad goes, you know, Jordan Rudis is a really talented player, but I'd rather hear 
one note played poorly by Miles Davis than a thousand notes played perfectly by Jordan Rudis. Holy you know? shit. And oh saying that in like, uh, hey, like, legit not trying to be an asshole like legit jordan's a fucking badass but like the music that i like and the kind of stuff yeah, that yeah. i would prefer to listen to or whatever blah 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 is stuff that is more in my opinion soulful or whatever yeah, blah, blah, yeah. Blah. And risky. Like, you know a month or so later he gets an email from jordan rudis hey man what the fuck you know <laughs> like this and that and he's like oh sorry you know or you know, he's uh, for the longest time he had beef with Neil Peart. It was like an invisible beef <laughs> that he had just created because it Dude. was like, you Damn. know, Neil P- everybody would go up to him and say, Oh my God, Terry, you're my favorite drummer. You know, you and Neil Peart, or you next to Neil Peart, or something like that. It would always be him and Neil. So it's almost like this like rivalry thing where he's like, Always, you know, fuck, what, like, <laughs> like, why are they always mentioning Neil? You know what I mean? And, uh, and that it's such like a, you know, a sitcom trope almost. <laughs> and they finally meet and they become best of friends and they're, they're just like shooting the shit together. They're totally amming it up. And then right after, like Neil said something really nice in not only his book, but like his, uh, you know, some magazine interview. And then my dad fired back saying the same thing about Neil and both, wow. you know, like it was just, it's, it's so funny where like if those guys maybe just would have talked years before or whatever, I don't know. And, and maybe it took that long for my dad to get whatever chip was on his shoulder the fuck off. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. he obviously held this kind of like, you know, sort of internal resentment. And it was probably just, you know, a reflection of his own insecurities, which is what a, a lot of hate can be, or a lot of at least fear or, you know, uh, insulty cunty kind of behavior. Yeah. That's, like so, that. that's so true. It's also interesting because we were like, you know, the Zappa documentary came out like a month ago or whatever, and we were watching it. And then we looked up the black page and one of the things that came up for the black page was your dad's like snare drum that he had made. And, and in one of those, uh, in one of the shoots, he was talking about how the first time that he met Neil and how the first time he met Neil rush was opening for Zappa. Oh, so yeah, I'm sure yeah, that that's yeah. weird to see like a guy that's opening for you go on to like achieve this massive like headlining arenas and selling out arenas and you know there there yeah. there's probably yeah. something associated with that oh yeah absolutely and i mean you know like rush as a band and him as a lyricist and all these things you know they've they've really they have this huge rabid fandom so i can understand it's like you know, almost the same thing you could imagine being uh, on the other side of like Danny Carey, and yeah. then yeah. seeing like, and then Tool fans are constantly coming up to you, being like Danny Carey, you know what I mean? And you're just like, oh fuck, if I hear one more Tool fan, you know, <laughs> um, but it, that, that that that's kind of that relation. But yeah, it's <clears throat> it, it is what it is. Everybody has little things. I mean, you know, of course, uh, there's I'm I'm really lucky in this world. There's only like two or three drummers that I don't like honestly like like i just don't like from the core of my being and it's just it doesn't necessarily have to do with their playing so much so as, as a person more has to do with as their a person personality. because yeah, yeah, because yeah. when you do what we do like i hate to say it but sometimes people are real assholes and real yeah. real egotistical Shitty. assholes and i've yeah. seen i've seen people who weren't really known before be put in huge bands and now they're the most well-known person in the world and they were they're total assholes and it is completely gone to their head and the way that they handle it it's like dude oh, like, yeah. get over yeah. yourself and so i see myself doing a lot of stuff like that like like having those backhanded compliments when talking about those drummers yeah. i'll still i'll still drop those like like i remember my dad saying about like like one of the only good things that he could say about neil was like oh yeah i remember thinking that it was really cool that um they had had everything kind of nailed down and onto the drum riser so they never had to tear down any hardware like everything was all set up and they just carted it into the arena blah 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 like he doesn't say anything about his play he doesn't say anything about it he's like oh yeah i thought that was kind of cool you know what i mean it's like all right like (laughs) why can't you just like buckle down and be like yeah he's solid or great rock drummer or whatever yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. it is what i mean I, i yeah i try to do that you know give uh I guess I might be given some Terry Bozio style compliments here and there, dude. 
it's dude, <laughs> it, it, it runs in the family. Yeah. Yeah. It, it runs in the family. We're, we're, but, we're definitely related. But dude, it's also a thing. It's like when you can see like the faults and uh, you know when you do the exact same thing and you're like oh he's not like very good at paradiddles like what the fuck you know it yeah. it does kind of it, you don't want to say it in that in a way that comes off like that but it's hard to not judge someone realistically when you do the same exact thing oh 100 percent, 100 percent, and yeah you're always under that uh, that magnifying glass of, well, I could do this or I could do that or whatever. But then that's the great thing about the ego and about the internet is seeing guys like uh, Yanni Matar or whatever, who's just like an insane, like does things that I can't comprehend on the drums. You know what I mean? Like all his hand techniques. Have you, have you, have you seen that guy? You know I, mean? I have not seen him. I'll, I'll, I'll send him I'll send him over to you but both of you guys will freak out he's he's just an absolute nutcase like he's taking the Jojo Mayer stuff to the next level okay where you're just like what what are you doing dude like you know crazy six hand six uh six stroke one-handed rolls you know what I mean where I might like, I might have seen his some videos I don't know if you it's the same have. guy he's but like an, He's an Israeli guy who plays, um, he's got like glasses and uh, plays um, minors, minor symbols, a lot of like dry symbols, but I'll, I'll right. send you a link. But yeah, it's like, that's a great thing where you're just like, okay, like, yeah, maybe I could get there one day, but like realistically, like, I just like to enjoy that for what it is. Yeah, like, yeah. That's, that, that's its own thing. Like, I understand. I will never be that great. Like, that's exactly. fine. Like, I, I love UFC. I love training mixed martial arts. I love yeah. training jujitsu, striking ball. I'll never fight in a cage. Yeah. I, I might compete grappling. You know what I mean? That's that's kind of a different animal. But I'll never fight in a cage, and I'm totally okay with that. Right? I mean, dude, that's honestly, <laughs> like, part of my new outlook on life is, like, let the things that aren't my thing be there, you know? Yeah. And then it's like, hey, what's my thing? I'm going to do that. You know what I'm 100%. saying? Because, like, dude, so many times in the past, I'll see some new drummer or new thing and be like, fuck, I got to do, I got to copy that. I got to be just like that. And it's like, yeah. it's almost like a waste of time, you know, like, oh, 100%. I, like, I'll totally rearrange my whole drum set because I'll see, like, some <laughs> other guy, you know, or, like, just yeah. totally go in a different direction all the time. And. But and like the other day, I think that's that shows good. That you're getting inspired, right? Yeah. It shows that you're getting excited by these things, you know, because uh, that, that doesn't always happen, right? Sometimes you're just yeah, definitely. That you're like, oh, whatever, this guy's doing that. Who gives a fuck? You know, no, what no, I mean? I mean, yeah, I mean, like, I'm not like that, you know, and, and I'll definitely yeah. see people play drums and be like, you know, like, oh, fuck, I'm, I need to redo my whole shit. But it's like now I'm kind of thinking like, OK, well, I've been playing drums for like 25 years, you know? And I'm like, yeah. okay, I kind of have a thing. And it's like, if I see somebody else, instead of being like, all right, I'm going to redo it all from the ground up. It's like, I'll just like take a little bit of influence from them and keep going with my own thing. And like, not just with drums, but with all kinds of different things, you know, like I'll, I catch myself going way too far into other hobbies and stuff like that, where it's like, like you said, I'm not going to fucking be a cage fighter. So it's like conserve no, that, that energy, conserve that energy for what you do do. No, you know no, I, dis I disagree with you. you disagree. Because, okay. Let's yeah. See yeah. Because well, what I was trying to say earlier was it's kind of like the book of five rings, right? Musashi said, if you want to be good at sword fighting, be good at calligraphy, be good at music, be good That's at true. horse riding, That's be good true. at all these other things. And then you're able to apply that, you know, so it is good to go out there and, and try these different hobbies. Like Definitely. that's kind of one of the most important things, right? Now, granted, yeah, you might not be, Conor McGregor, yeah. you know. What yeah. I mean? Well, I think like, I think going luck. too yeah, fucking too far is what I'm saying. Like, yeah. that's cool. I feel that. Do a couple other hobbies. Get it yeah, going. Don't, don't don't go wild with it. Well, yeah. Don't but, don't become such a hobbyist that is taking completely yeah. away from the thing that you actually do to the point that you don't practice that or focus yeah, on that at that's all what I'm anymore. Saying. Like if yeah, like the quote that you gave. It's like okay, maybe you want to be good at sword fighting, but learn some calligraphy but it's like okay we're doing maybe like 15 <laughs> minutes of calligraphy and then we're getting back yeah, to sword yeah. fighting you know, like, calligraphy. you know like is conor mcgregor doing calligraphy probably not you know he's probably doing striking he's he's trying to win yeah. at ufc end of story 
So it's like yeah. everything he does is conducive to winning. Period. That's true. That's you know, true. and you need to. But that's what works for him. Exactly. You know, and uh, I mean, for, for other guys, look at a guy like John Jones. He did a lot of his best fighting when he was on drugs, partying the night before, not really focusing on the fighting <laughs> and shit like that. You know what I mean? He yeah. still kicked people. Yeah. You know, like, it is what it is. And he did better on where it's like, no, this fight, I've been training, I'm sober, blah, blah, blah. He, like, those were close fights. Like, he didn't yeah, do yeah. as good on those fucking fights. So, I, I hear know. you. Uh, I, I hear you. And, and it's, that's, that's kind of the beauty of trying new things you exactly. can find out hey maybe this does work maybe this is something that i need to incorporate more and yep. like something where i found with the the weight training and, and all that stuff like i want to give it a shot to be a pro wrestler before the time i die you know oh, no, i, think you totally I mean should. i don't think there's anyone else who's more fit for the job than you man you know <laughs> you know so much about wrestling that it's crazy like i would say that yeah. even more than a musician you're like a wrestling historian well dude why don't you I, hook, up, hook up with ash I'm a, it's a, do you I'm actually want to be a pro wrestler? Because I'll fucking make that connect if you don't know Ash. Yeah, I, I have connections. I, okay. I, I have all the connections I need to be a pro wrestler. Okay, because I'll um, make because I, I know Ash is managing in. Yeah. Wrestling. No, I I, like I got some that. I got some homies that'll hook me up. I don't I don't need no manager, bro. I, <laughs> I don't I need no. Shit. Are you sure? About you don't, that? You don't, I mean, don't want anyone don't know, to take. Dude. You don't, don't want know. anyone to take thirty percent, dude. Yeah, exactly, bro. I'm going full Ric Flair on him. Fuck that, you know? We're going old school. Oh, that's um, a drop I need right there. I need a, a, a Ric Flair. There we go. Oh, I was going to say Rain and saying we're going, I'm going full Ric Flair. Yeah, that too. Yeah, we could, that's, those are, uh, we, we got a handful from this. I, I've, oh, already, yeah. I've already picked out a couple. What, what when you guys. were a kid though, like what sparked your obsession with fucking wrestling? Because you know, you know literally everything there is to know. Like one night we were, Probably like on drugs in your yes, in, someone's in someone's apartment in someone's apartment your apartment downtown LA uh, you were with playing fucking, wrestling with, with Intronaut yeah what what's his name with uh, Dave, Dave with Dave Dave, Dave and Joe I think we're both there from Intronaut and, and we were fucking what's his name um to uh, you, to, uh Sean your brother oh Sean uh, yeah Sean was there so it was it was the whole Sean gets mentioned on fan. every episode I know Sean He's should just have be, to on the be on the show at some point but, uh, to, yeah, but we were we were downtown at your apartment in LA and we were watching fucking wrestling all night yeah, and I started talking to you I feel like I knew you were way into wrestling but that was the night that I like realized how much you fucking knew about like you know everything it's crazy but what started yeah. it yeah I, yeah, well, that's when I started to get more into it than ever. It was around that time, like my knowledge just kind of started exploding. But um, oh, wow. I was about eight years old. I, I'd always known about pro wrestling, like Hulk Hogan and or like Razor Ramon, certain guys. You know, I remember like the WrestleMania arcade game was basically like Mortal Kombat, but with like wrestling. It was like at, at Pizza Hut. I would play all the time. You know, so I had like a vague idea. But then Stone Cold Steve Austin came out and. Uh, it just, he changed the game. He w he was so badass. There was something about his look, his attitude, uh, the way he talked, the way he carried himself. It was this larger than life character that I was just like, wow, that guy's fucking cool. That was like a real life movie star. Like these guys are acting, you know, in movies like John Claude Van Damme or whatever, yeah. but like this guy's really a fucking badass. And, and I knew that wrestling was like fake, but I, I like Stone Cold was believable. He was fucking real. You know what I mean? Like it didn't matter what the fuck was going on. And so that I st slowly started my foray, started watching on Monday nights. My family started watching it with me. And like, it became our family thing together. Like we watched all the wrestling. I remember going over to my aunt's house and like me and my dad, and my mom being like, Hey, we need to order this pay-per-view. Like we'll pay you cash for it. But like, we have to watch this Sunday pay-per-view. Like this is, we've been building up to this for weeks. And like, I remember the other side of my family being like weirded out or just like not really enjoying it as much as we did. Like we fucking loved it. So yeah, it became a big thing then <laughs> around like middle school, 2001, 2002, 
I started falling out of it, you know, and, and it did when the business itself dwindled, like that's when it was its hottest from like 97, 98 until 2001 yeah. wrestling was never more successful. It was all over the front pages of every, you know, TV guide, whatever. And, um, that's, you know, th- those are literally their, well, their most, well, were those uh, like the, the stone cold Steve Austin, the rock, uh, triple H yeah, Chris Jericho, yeah, Chris, yeah. undertaker. You had yep. just all, all these amazing, um, characters and yeah like larger than life great writing it's funny a lot of comedy writers actually wrote for wrestling at that time like I think Patrice O'Neill oh wow and like stuff like that like those guys wrote yeah like John Flor uh yeah John Florentine is that his name yeah I believe um so. yeah like they had good comedy writers at the time that I was like really in love with it so I was like okay it's good to know that at least like I was out of my mind like they had like the comedy that I liked then is still the comedy I like now you know what I mean it was it was it was present throughout the whole thing but like I said I started getting to middle school I started getting more into music and I, I wanted to be a pro wrestler before that, you know, I was like, cool, this is what I'm going to do. Little did I know the sacrifices that I would have to make. Little did I know yeah. how hard it would be on your body, all these things. Right. But, um, I had enough problems as it was, so I didn't need to be a pro wrestling <laughs> fan going into middle school. You know what I mean? I was already goth, already liked corn, yeah. you know, I already liked some 41, all this stuff. It was just like, no. And, and I went to like a rich white Republican <laughs> Texan school where, yeah, like you were the outcast, you freak it paint your nails you weirdo you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah. Stuff. so i was like all right uh, last thing i need for them to know is that i like watching men wrestle in their underwear you know what i mean but <laughs> it is what it is i fell out of love with it and then slowly as i got into those years of 21 20 you know 19 um i just started re-watching some of the old stuff that i had fell in love with and then started getting into the new stuff and it just avalanche from there just snowballed i started studying about the past about wrestling before i was alive even you know what i mean yeah yeah. Yeah. getting into all that stuff listening to a lot of wrestling podcasts and um you know reading a lot of wrestling wikipedia articles and and then now it's just with youtube and all that stuff it's just exploding even more and um it's it's a pretty hot time for wrestling oddly enough it was one of the one sports that uh didn't really stop you know, they kept like doing WWE throughout COVID. You know, they were like, fuck the bullshit. We're, we're doing this shit. So <laughs> yeah. it is what it is. But uh, yeah, I, I figure if I could be a reverse Chris Jericho, I'll be happy. Like music is my main thing. And then I do a little bit of wrestling. Yeah. You know, like, like that, that'd be great. I, I, I think I you should know. do it, dude. I think you should do it. Well, dude. what is it that like really draws you to wrestling? Because, dude, my dad watched wrestling religiously and I was always watching it as a kid but there was I I just never really it never sucked me in in the way in like the that obsessive way yeah uh like I said I think it was at the time the characters really got to me and then yeah. now knowing like kind of what they were like outside of that what they were doing like hearing about Ric Flair's life and all the crazy shit that he's been through and yeah. done and just the wild like they live like rock stars they yeah. and and there's so many parallels to music and wrestling yeah it's very weird. I could I could go on forever about how like similar they are in, in so many ways, whether it's the traveling, you know, whether it's the totally. the art of the performance itself. Some guys like to call every spot of a match before they go out there and wrestle. Some guys just improvise, go out there and call it in the ring. You know, and yeah. like it, yeah. it's 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 pretty awesome. And and then all the different styles and different regions and it's it's it was just a fascinating thing and and um the physicality it's you know it's kind of like uh, uh what's the word? It's like uh violent ballet, you know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> so what do you see what do violent you see ballet, what do you see yourself title. as being? Like what kind of wrestler are you? I'm uh, I'm realistic because I'm starting later on in life and who knows, maybe my mindset will change, but I think I want to be a tag team wrestler because I don't want to have to work the whole time. You know what I mean? You want to be able to take those breaks. Yeah. Catch your breath every now and then, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I love the art of tag team wrestling, too, is really fascinating. It's really cool. I've always been fascinated by that and, and how it's kind of this subgenre within a thing that you have all these different elements that come into play uh, that you wouldn't have in a normal match. So, uh, yeah, I think I would be a, a tag team wrestler. I, I already have some, some ideas. Me and my friend have been kicking around this idea for a tag team called... <laughs> 
pain and pleasure. And <laughs> Who's pain? Well, that's that's what we we talked about originally. Um, pain I was and- like. It's perfect because I'll be pleasure because like I'm like <laughs> if, if you see this guy that I want to be tag teams with, he's like my height but two hundred something pounds, tattooed, bald, you know what I mean? Like looks like a badass, right? Yeah. And then I like the, the two of us together, he would be pain, I would be pleasure. Like it's an easy. If you saw us, uh, no problem. Anybody would make that, uh, you know, could make that. Uh, what's the word wow. conclusion, right? Could come to that conclusion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, he goes, well, I want to be pleasure. And I'm like, yeah, dude, you know what? No, you're right. You're so, he, cause he's so sweet. He's such a nice guy and he really knows like all these elements. He's an adult performer as well. And, and knows, uh, you oh, know, what's his name? So we can of, look him up. Uh, crow look up my, my buddy crow on porn, uh, pornhub.com. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think he's I I don't know what how he spells his name. I know he All spells right, well, it a couple there, different ways. It's either with a K, but it's no W. So it's either K R O or C R O. Okay. And uh look look him up. Crow thirteen. Great guy. <laughs> we'll talk we'll talk about his uh his side gig later. But um, <laughs> he's 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 kind of cut from the same cloth because he's also a musician, he's also a magician, and then an actor adult performer pro wrestler like he does a little bit of it all right does he do that all in porn like does he Uh, incorporate it all no but we everybody suggests that and he he will eventually (laughs) he'll 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 start incorporating magic sooner or later into the porn wonderful um but yeah so i was like you know what because because he is a really sweet guy honestly like it's hard to get him to say a bad thing about anybody it it really is It's, it's like insane almost i i envy that about him um, and I'd always sound like such an asshole next to him because I just I love hating on people, whether it's friendly ribbing or whatever. You know, what I mean? it's just fun, like talking yeah. shit. Dude, I was gonna make. I, I thought of this great like post, Facebook post, Twitter tweet or whatever, and I was like, <laughs> friends don't bond over what they love; they bond over what they hate. It's real yeah. as fuck. <laughs> it's real as fuck. I bet that the, the three of us have had. Uh, well, I know that we've had really good hate sessions together. So that's oh, what it's all about. It's just funny, you know. I'm trying to joke 100%. around, you know. Like it's yeah. funny, just clowning, dude. I got flamed because you guys helped me clown. And you know what? We're just gonna go ahead. I'm not gonna name names, but okay. there was a band that you guys showed me, and I went off and named names on Facebook. I was like, "This band is fucking terrible. <laughs> they sound like Russian gent with like these bad singers." Who and, is like, it? All this shit. Don't say it. No, now. I want. I want to know who it is. What's it well, start? You, it starts with a D. I have it's no two, idea who two, it is. Two letter or two two. Word band name. Oh my god! So, you know what it is? I'll just say oh. it. can I say it? Yeah. Kirk, okay, Destiny Potato. Oh, okay. oh okay. <laughs> shit! Are they a band still? I don't know. I don't think so, bro. I don't think so. Yeah. But I think Why would I? Sh- went oh. on, I think that guy's like on a lot of people's good lists. Like he's homies with a lot of our homies and whatever. And he okay. actually sent me a message. I'm sure he's cool. You know? Yeah. And he was like, Hey man, don't know why you're hating on me. Like blah, blah, blah. This and that. I, didn't <laughs> I was, and I told you guys too. I was like, he sent me a message. What a dumbass! Like, <laughs> what? Still clowning when did this happen? Time. When we were living together? Yeah. When we were oh living together, God. I remember like, yeah, he you, probably hates I think us. you showed me, I think you Cheney showed me destiny potato and like, wow. we, were all, we were all standing around like laughing at it. Just like, <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Cause it sounded like real, like it honestly did not sound very good. Like it, it just, it sounded like funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. It sounded like this is comical, like like complete the band complete. If you know the band complete, if you don't check them out on YouTube, no. they're like actually bad performers. <laughs> oh but, my um, god, ah! I've never heard of that band. Complete. Okay, complete. Oh, you guys are gonna have a field day with complete after, and I want you oh god. to do. I want you to do a check back in with me, or either check back in with the people on the podcast. Yeah. After they've seen some complete performances, that One might be a new. That might be a new drop. Ending. Actually, I think we got a little clip. <laughs> Honestly, bro, there's a lot of that going on. They're fucked up when they're playing, dude. It's, it's amazing. I'm not even going to spoil what complete is. Just guys, check it out. You're, awesome. you're going to love it. Are they drunk yeah. when they're playing or this is what they play? Yeah, they this is what up, they put like, forth. Some of the guys were drunk. Some of the guys were high. Some of the guys were really nervous. And some of the guys <laughs> couldn't play. You know what I mean? It was just a How many fucking guys were in this band? There's like five. Okay. Uh, four so. or five. But like... 
a perfect storm of they can't fucking play their instruments and they're idiots and like these songs sound like a joke. (laughs) <laughs> the, the, the song sounded like a joke. So that's how I felt at the time yeah. about Destiny Potato. And I, yeah, I went on and hated. And then I caught a lot of flame for that because people were like, oh, you know, they, they knew the guitar player and the guitar player is a nice guy or whatever. And yeah. somebody tagged him in the post. Then he Damn. says, <laughs> and blah, called blah, out. Yeah. Dude, people, people do it. I even fuck, dude. I was even guilty of this the other day. I was guilty of this months ago. Hey, no Uh-oh. hate, no What'd hate over here on, on Destiny Potato. If they want to be on the podcast, or something, I actually it's all good. don't even like. I haven't. Li- I don't know what they sound like. Yeah. They're gent. I hope they can tell their side of the story. They're gen- yeah. they're gent listen. music. Yeah. It's what I will gent- say is that I would never, na- I would never have named my band that. Yeah, bad interesting Russian name. Chick, two bad Russian chick singers who sound like <laughs> Evanescence. Well, they had two? <laughs> they, they, so yeah, but they Evanescence like is Evanescence. really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> no, I'm so saying I'm, I like Amy. Okay, dude. She's great. She's Amy great. Lee's I'm, vocals. I'm not, I said like Evanescence. Okay. Evanescence is fine, but being to be like Evanescence and Jen is not a good combo. It's like, okay, <laughs> this is not, you're trying too hard. <laughs> on them real hard because it was like just really random the song titles everything I was weird about that. it it was yeah. just too destiny i mean potato. dude i don't know gonna hate on that? are they still are you not gonna hate on that i don't know if they're a band or not but the name yeah it's gonna yeah, be cool you deserve a little bit of hate come on gonna, you know gonna... it's like corn <laughs> you guys are gonna be hated yeah for being yeah it's like by the way my favorite naveen line ever greatest naveen line ever uh, was her. about corn <laughs> in like two, this is 2009, 2010, Naveen, okay. slaughter. And we were talking about how my dad had just gotten kicked out of corn a little while ago or whatever. And he was like, <laughs> wait, Naveen's what? Like, oh, all right. Tell the story. <laughs> Naveen's after. like, dude, we all got duped. <laughs> He's like, we all got duped in the liking corn. Think about it. Like they, played them, they played us on MTV like they tricked us, dude. They tricked us into thinking corn was good. <laughs> <laughs> dude but corn is good you know, like this is a, issues that's kind of funny from our last episode we were talking about how corn is good right no you know like corn was corn good isn't My they body. are very bad they are very bad but you know who's really fucking good who gets the hate is limp biscuit dude limp, limp biscuit no. is oh man amazing yo They're rain like in. we, pl- we saw time. limp biscuit last year in mexico city and it was no joke probably my it favorite like performance one of the best i've shows ever seen ever. it's in my top there's, 10 it, they're on my bucket list concert like honestly there's probably four living artists that i have not seen dude, i'll I, tell I you right now i saw Square Pusher, sick ass yeah, fucking sick. show. Yeah, I saw live show was fucking show. insane. Yeah. I saw fucking Amon Tobin Izom. I saw fucking Tool, fucking Kiss. I haven't you seen name Tool it. Fucking yet. everybody that you could have ever imagine a fucking scene dude you know, actually kiss, kiss the played the same show yeah. kiss played the same show and i was like man fuck kiss, kiss was this I sucks yeah, kiss. dude i'm sick of this shit hello mexico what the fuck is up everyone it's like <laughs> i'm not i'm not trying to hear dr roxo no it was oh when i God. go the, the mexico last I saw, the last time i saw a full kiss concert because i did see him at jimmy kim alive which they, they were a little bit better there but the last time i saw an actual kiss concert Paul Stanley was sick, and instead of canceling the show, or instead of saying, you know what, so-and-so is going to sing all the, you know, this person will sing, or whatever, (laughs) they went through with the show, and Paul just sang sick, screeching, like, struggling to hit the notes the whole time, he was like, (gasps) hey, that's kind of respectable. Coffee that's kind of respectable. I know because there, kind of there have been times when I've been sick at shows and dude, it's like not fun to be a vocalist who's sick at a show and you can't that's, like I do know, your thing. I can imagine like it's fucking brutal as hell. It like it's sucks. you can't do your thing, but like sit it out. You know what I mean? Take a knee. No, dude, that was that, that's I, pretty cool. I, I got thing. respect for him. Here's for doing the that. thing: I tried one time. We were on tour with Black Dahlia Murder in in Rochester. And I was so sick that I like could not do vocals and I was trying so hard to sit it out. But Evan Brewer took me into the van and had a heart to heart with me. And he's like, would any of your favorite vocalists sit out a show? Like if you went to a show and you wanted to see any of your favorite vocalists play live and you didn't see them there with the band, what would you think about the vocalist? And I was like, yeah, I would actually think it was cooler if the vocalist showed up. And, and 
that from then on I've been like I don't really care if a vocalist is sick and can't really do it I'm down yeah, I'm there it, because I shot. know what it feels like sure, and I guess it's kiss and it's like whatever but at the same time like it literally made the concert noticeably worse because he's singing the worst lines that like it's just like okay like just you're better off like he's playing guitar like he's still there like he's still yeah. gonna do shit. Just like don't sing. It's not like there. It's a band up there without a vocalist. Yeah. They, they why couldn't Why couldn't have someone vocalists. else sing the songs? They have three. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Bro, you're right. Split it, but split it between the you're other right. three fucking guys in the band. Surely they know some of these songs. They've been on the road for goddamn ever. <laughs> like they the might know the lyrics. Song. Like legit, bro. Like just let them try. At least them trying is gonna be better than you failing. Like yeah. legit. It's like they've so. they've played Love Gun like five thousand fucking times. They know the lyrics to Love for Gun. Real dog, for real. <laughs> so, but dude, we yeah, played. So. so we played. We got on this show in Mexico. And like it was Metallica like, played that night, and Tool, and we're like every band played. Right? With us? Uh, no, no, I think that was also on the. I think Dream Theater. <laughs> Dream Theater was doing. Uh. Uh tour and they played the next night but we played the night that mashuga K- kiss limp biscuit uh like Allison chains right no it i was, don't know uh, what's, the, what's the fucking guy that like everybody makes fun of the alice weird, cooper really alice like, cooper oh, alice, no yeah. was it alice cooper? well alice cooper played and we met like a guy from alice cooper's band's brother at the hotel we were playing at <laughs> 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 No, he's like, yeah, we're with Alice Cooper, man. You know, like, like these fucking Long my, Island my guys. Brothers he's from got, my he's brothers. got the fucking laminate. He's got the yeah. jacket. Uh, yeah. He had it. Leather jacket. He, he also had cool pictures cut. of us. He had printed out pictures of everyone on the entire yes. package. And he had us come over and sign them. It was so fucking weird, dude. I love it when people do that. I've, yeah, I've, it's I've, sick. I've, yeah. I've had people do that before where, like, you go and you're like, okay, these people have no, like, they're going to see the band that I'm playing in. I'm just playing drums. Yeah. yeah. And, like, they went to my Facebook profile Looked and you like, up. Yeah. printed out pictures of me. And we're yeah. just like, oh, yeah. Like, yes. Like, I'm into that stalkerishness. Yeah. That's that cool. happened. When we got to the airport, some guy was like, oh, oh, Cheney, Cheney crap. Okay. Here, sign. Can you sign this for me? And, like, it was a picture. That, that honestly, in Mexico, landing in Mexico City was the most, like, rock star experience I've ever had because Alice right, Cooper was on our plane. Alice Cooper was on our plane. So we saw him walk, coming, going into the plane. But when we were. were first class to where you guys definitely yeah, were not. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like, we're the yeah. death metal no, band. We're on getting the on the plane. <laughs> and no. Yeah. The toilets. Yeah. <laughs> so we get on. We're on the fifth We stage. get on and we sit down and I'm like, Cheney, Alice Cooper. On the, on the plane just saying just which FYI. was weird but then we got into Mexico City and you <laughs> you walk out of the airport there and there are hella fans it's still like that in Mexico City and they yeah. knew who I was I couldn't fucking believe it at all it was insane it. Yeah, not That's me so which was, I mean that was sick though I like when people know who Cheney is and not me I'm like yes <laughs> just I'm the gear husband but yeah so it was Alice Cooper fucking Mashuga. okay wait wait I have a question about this guy who was Alice Cooper's brother's friend oh yeah he yeah. was there he was like yeah we're with Alice it was Alice like the Cooper, guitar man. player <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bassist cause Cheney and I went we stayed at a hotel and we're like okay let's go out by the pool we went out by the pool we got some beers we were chilling and we, we saw these like rocker guys, you know. So yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. let's go talk to these well, rocker guys. Well, they kept guys. looking at us. Also, we were like yeah. laying out and they kept looking at us. And I was like, there's something up with these guys. Yeah, they let's like, go check them out. Yeah. You know, let's go look, talk to them. Okay. Like, yeah, Here's we're number f- one quality of that guy. That guy always has a leather jacket that's not a cool cut. It's not like yes. a biker cut. It's like the ones you would get at Sears. You know what I mean? Like they have <laughs> totally. no collar and they like yes. zip up. You know yeah. what I mean? And they're like, they have Oh, it's it like a like motorcycle cut. jacket. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think he no, had that. Not I think like, well, no, not like a motorcycle jacket, right? Like uh, I'm talking about like those nerdy, almost like a bomber jacket, like a leather bomber jacket. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's just the... I got a leather jacket to be yeah. cool, but like I don't know what cool is. So yeah, I'm I wearing, walked into I'm, Sears I'm or JC Penny. New Balance, and my band shirt is tucked in to my belt, like high tight. And high tight and, and I also me. still have teased hair from 1986. Yeah, that oh, was teased like, hair. I can't that was his vibe. Hair. That was his vibe. As long, so, long so were these guys hair. more like they actually had it together, like this is rock and roll, or like mm. but they're just from like a past I'm, I'm time. thinking no, maybe it was from a past Past time, it was rock and roll okay. from a past from a but time. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like past. they got lucky to be there. 
Well, yeah. I think that one. I think that <laughs> his brother. I think his brother is in Alice Cooper, literally, because you know people in yeah. bands like that doesn't mean their whole family is cool. Yeah, like I think maybe his brother landed the drummer gig spot, and then he was like, He's "You like, guys should bro. come." And he was like fifty and from Long Island, Long Island. Yeah, I can't he wants do it. To kick it with the young hip cats. Yeah, yeah. So, we, so we were talking to them for a while. We kept seeing him around, you know. We oh, we him saw the him the next night. Well, at Domination, see, okay, we played Domination Festival, and we were given a lot of bottles to te- uh, tequila. What's that was call. Yeah, mess call. We got mess call in Jameson, so I was wasted by the time that I saw this guy the next night. <laughs> and and then he was like in his leather jacket and you know. Oh, and so he was in uh, it all with the teased hair and the leather jacket the next night. Yeah, so he so oh, so the first time you saw him maybe he was a little more normal and then Yeah, cuz it was just the at the show. swimming pool at like 1 in the afternoon and he had only yeah. had one drink as opposed to the next night when he, mm. everything was going down and he had like 20 drinks. But now, dude, is this guy drinking like frozen drinks, I'm guessing. He has like one of those mugs. I think he had, had like, like a green one of those or a pink liquid in it. <laughs> I'm sure he had one of those. I can't really remember what he was drinking. Honestly. Souvenir mug, for sure. He probably that, that did. Is a, uh, is a, let me get souvenir mugs. It said old, like Mexico huge on the side of it. Yeah. Oh but dude, God. what I will say is that we also saw Vince Neil play that day. And Vince Neil fucking killed it. Because it was right really? around that time, the time that the video came out. With Vince Neil totally sucking. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, he's a fat yeah. pig. He sucks. But we saw dude. him and he fucking... Murder. I was like, he's so good. Got it, dude. He still got it. He still got it. It It was a bad day that they got him on video. Yeah, that makes that's understandable. That's sad. See, there's a lot of those bad days of him on video, and that I think is the problem. Hey, the the fucking Mexico one was sick. Straight up. Have you seen his cameo? Where he's like, yeah, birthday yes. He's like, hey, brother, is going to give you wish my best birthday. It's like, it's like a Tim and Eric. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. I've um, seen some cameos from him, but not, okay, that's not good. Is Zoltan Cheney like the sickest? Who's his that? His drummer. His drummer who does all the fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he has my he's name. Like, oh. Yeah, yeah. His last name is Cheney, Zoltan Cheney. Like spelled Damn. the same way as me, or spelled yeah, with C- spelled the Whoa. same way. Yeah. No, it's we awesome. did. We saw that actually. I remember him being pretty sick. But is he the guy? Because the uh, he, he might not have been playing with him on that tour. I'm pretty sure it um, was. I'm pretty sure. It okay, was. yeah. He wears like a basketball jersey. He does shit where he like. Because yeah, I remember being like, oh, this drummer is like symbol. real stand out, like kind of. She kicks the symbols, dude. It's insane. Like he'll play and he'll like kick the fucking hi hat. Like his foot comes up and you're like, what? How did he kick that fucking hi hat, dude? <laughs> well, insane. more importantly, why did he kick the hi hat, dude? Yeah, because why? Because he's playing with Vince Neil and Slaughter and he needs to keep himself entertained. So he's like, all right, I'm going to fucking at least make the absolute best of this shit and like be big time crazy movements and fucking like all his shit's super low. You know, yeah, I mean? that was yeah. definitely him. Definitely I remember him. that. Yeah. I remember that. Are like super high. You're like, whoa, dude, this guy's a I trip. mean, to be like, fair, you... we watched him for like 10 minutes and then we were like, yeah. let's go get a but drink. On the other hand, Limp Biscuit, <laughs> Limp Biscuit, we watched the entire fucking set and it blew my mind. Our friend, Fred Durst, was calling for a person to come up and finish a song with him during I don't know which song because honestly, not that big of a. I don't, yeah, I'm not a song. Limp Biscuit historian, but he called him uh, up. And our friend Andre got pulled up on stage and finished the entire fucking Limp Biscuit song with Fred Durst. And it was the coolest thing that I've ever yeah, seen in my amazing. life. All of Mexico. Dude, amazing. there were 75,000 people at this festival. <clears throat> yeah, and it's it was, they were all crazy, jumping was like, up and down. It was crazy. It was 75,000 people. Yeah. yeah it was Just thinking about those numbers is like not happening. <laughs> yeah. Something yeah. that I don't no I, way in hell. Yeah. You can't imagine seventy five thousand people together right Dude, now. No, it, no yeah. shit. Oh, right, right. Yeah, of course. I uh, can't imagine more than five people together right now. Yeah. Oh, I've been I've been getting naughty every now and then having more than five people oh, over. Don't shit. don't tell Governor Newsom. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't hit him up while he's like in his yacht. Just like if you post a picture, thousand. you just gotta post a picture and you like everybody spreads out just for the picture. And then yeah. after that it's, it's like, like all right guys, bro, pretend. I think about this stuff now. I like think about like, okay, how many people do I have over right now? Like, do we not have masks on? Like what what is going on to where if I post this, I'm gonna get some fucking hate. 
Because yeah. I know there's bitter ass motherfuckers out there just like, how dare you? I see all you motherfuckers <laughs> partying, blah, blah, blah. You're part of the problem, this and that. Well, like, whatever. It's like, oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. sorry. Like, I'm just trying to live, like, kind of live my life a little bit normally. And back, kind of bringing it back, a callback, if you will, if you want to use back. a call call back. Reference, yeah. Comedy reference, call yeah. back. Um, about Corona being great or like, like the whole COVID thing being good for us is like legit. The only thing that has happened less is like, I'm not going out to bars and yeah, like yeah. partying and stuff like that. And like, I'm not playing shows. That's like yep. legit. The only two things that are like different in my life. Yeah. Everything else is the same. Like I'm seeing some people less than I would see others. You know what I mean? And, or some people don't want to see me right now. Cause you know, they're COVID sensitive. And I totally understand that. And, they have yeah. every right. To that. Totally. I, and I get that it, too. You know? Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, you know, my, my birthday weekend is coming up. I know. Right, I was going to say right. that it's you. Yeah. Cause Nam is usually like your birthday or the week before your birthday. Yeah. Which is always amazing. You never have to pay for drinks. You just fucking, you just, Dude, this was going to be All my, to this do. was going to be my 10th Nam. 10th nam in a row, bro. I think it would be mine too, probably. Yeah, it was going to be my 10, 10 in a row, dude. No, no, I, I would have, it would be 11, or it would be nine in a row for me because I missed, yeah. I missed a couple, but. It would yeah. have been, would have been <laughs> 10 in a row, dude. Missed out on that 10th one. Blew it. Blew it. Blew it. I was, All I've it. been planning on doing like, I was going to actually try to go down to my brother's because he lives like 15 minutes away. Yeah. And like post a picture of me outside of the <laughs> center, like, hey, what's going on? I'm here for Why Nam and the shit. Fuck it. And wear my badge got, from last year. You know what I mean? A guy who really commits to a bit. You know? <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> legit, legit driver. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Sit, no, dude, it's, si it's, it's six, six hours. and a half yeah, hours. Eesh, that's brutesky, guys. Well, luckily I'm not in Costa Mesa, so it'll be a little less for me when I come up there and, and kick it Santa Cruz style. Where are you but living anytime, right now? Anytime, man. Anytime. I'm living in NoHo, North Hollywood. Ah, oh, bro. Sick, sick, dope, nasty apartment. I'm off like Laurel Canyon and Magnolia. Great location. Nice. I'm like, yeah, uh, it's, I, I couldn't be in a better, this is actually the nicest apartment I've ever lived in. I would say I have like a ball and pool elevator. Can't use the pool. Can't use the gym. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. pool's Can't close, use the right? Dance studio. Can't use all these things that they have, but, uh, I have a badass parking garage. It's the little things, you know what I mean? A patio. I can go take bong rips on yeah. anytime I want. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, feels great. And then I have my Twitch set up here. We'll come to you live from twitch.tv slash rain plays. And um, yeah, I've, I've got my little fortress set up. I'm loving it. I, I really like my mental health. So many things right now in my life are just incredible. Like I just, I feel great. Like I'm, I'm really just trying to ride this amazing good, wave of happiness, positivity. And, um, you know, uh, as, as odd as the first year of my thirties was the next year is going to be just as amazing and odd and, and whatever yeah. the future holds, I'm, I'm willing to uh, roll with the punches. So, uh, that being said, this Saturday, I'm going to have one group of friends over for the UFC fight, Connor's fighting. And then the following Sunday is the Royal Rumble. So I'm going to have another group of friends over the next week. So I'm splitting it up. It's like, okay, I only have like four friends over realistically, you know, what I would, what I would normally have. Yeah. And, um, cause my birthday's on a Monday, man. Fuck that dude. I don't, who, who wants to celebrate on a Monday? So splitting it into two weekends and, and taking all the COVID protocols. Some yeah. people are even getting tested. You know what I mean? They're taking <laughs> this shit seriously. They got, they're showing mad respect to the Godfather when they show up, you know what I mean, on his birthday. Nice. The, prince, what's the up? prince of paradiddles. The prince, prince of percussion. Of there we the go. House. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. Well, hey, it is six. I know that you, you said you had to go at six. Uh, yeah. You know what? I mean, I'm do, until I get a text... So Fuck your go. friend. Keep going. Until bro. I get a text. Well, we'll see about that. He's got some texts. <laughs> but uh, until I get a text, I think we're good to roll. Awesome. Let's keep rolling. You know what I mean? Because I'm, I, I'm loving talking with you guys. I miss. I you know. Guys so I much. miss you, I, man. It's, it's yeah. been, it's great to talk. Great to I love here. you guys. <clears throat> the dearest. I mean, you're, you're legit like family to me. Uh, even though we don't talk all the time, it's, 
It's like we just start this conversation and it just gets rolling and it's like no, nothing ever changed. Yeah. Well, still. I know that's news. the thing with good friends, man. It's like you can talk to them after you haven't hung out in a long time, and it's just like we're just you know, it's the things are are picking up as they left they were left off. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I don't. I you know, it seems really, and because everything was standing still anyway, that like yesterday was Nam and I was hanging out with you guys, and I know. it was weird because I was getting everybody had a weird feeling that name. That was like a weird name. The you last I mean? name, it was like, yeah, yeah, it was kind of weird. It, it was like it yeah. didn't feel the same. Oh, you know, you know why? I know fucking why. Because they had it a week before my birthday instead of the week <laughs> of my birthday. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, why, that's why. That's why. That's why. Honestly, the whole year that set the whole fucking year into a downward spiral from there. If they just would have set it up properly, it. it's it's that simple. We can lead it all. We can lead all the COVID cases. Being to if they would have just Nam. waited that yeah. extra week for Nam yeah. to they have on my it. birthday. You know what's funny yeah. about hanging out with you at Nam though is that like, dude, I've I've trailed with you at Nam a few times, and it's like I just can't hang out with you because you get stopped by so many people. Everyone in Nam knows you. It's weird. I I, like every Nam, single dude. fucking Prince person. Of Nam. <laughs> and then it's slam. like it takes us 45 minutes to go and just smoke a joint outside in that little area it's brutal because we're always well it's because me i'm always trying to get like oh well wait this person wants to smoke like, yeah. Let's yeah, get yeah. Them. yeah yeah i know as we're walking you to do, go do get that other person yep. we'll run into somebody else and it's like ah fuck i know yeah when- I, I i understand i know this i I don't know the struggle, but I can relate to the struggle of yeah. you guys. And I really appreciate my good Nam buddies and partners who can, you know, just go with the flow and we usually end up catching up with each other afterwards. It's just like, you guys will just go and be like, okay, cool. Yeah. I'll catch up with you like in an hour and a half or whatever. Or yeah. we don't. Yeah. And then like, my, my thing at Nam though, is just like, if you get stopped and stuff, I'm just going to keep Yeah. Keep moving. <laughs> I keep moving. It's I'm it's, keeping moving on, <laughs> but I, I feel yeah, that I mean, that goes boy. that goes Dude, two ways happens. though. That no, goes it two happens ways. always. Yeah, it's like if I get stopped, I want you yeah, to leave. Yeah, go ahead, dude. If you get stopped, I'm <laughs> leaving. Like that's yeah. what it should be. Because otherwise we would, that. it's just a stop and chat. <laughs> Nam, Nam is Nam is the fucking dude. Nam is the ultimate like stop and chat. I feel like that's I'm over abandonment. I know. Rain Rain will like sit there and wait. And we're just like, all right, fuck them, dude. We're out of here. Dude, one time I was but, like but down honestly, on the... Go ahead. It, it worked. The waiting works for me, too, because I was like, cool, I get a break from having to talk to people for a little while. Like, I could just like chill out for a couple seconds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dude, this is like I remember Nam one year I followed episode. you down into the... the, the What's it called? The bottom level, I guess? The pit. The bottom level. Yeah, I, I followed you market. down there because someone was like... Someone that you knew was playing this drum thing that was like, uh, uh, what are those called? It was like an, it was like an, an eight. Octopad? Yeah, it was an octopad. Yeah. That's exactly what it that, was. But it wasn't that, right? Yeah, yeah. No, or, but it was, dude, you had a friend. Was performing? No, you had some friends who had like an, it was an octopad type. It was a drumming type thing. Yeah. Do you remember yeah, this? I remember that. It was like kind of like an electronic steel drum almost. That's exactly what it was. And yeah. and then I got like stuck down there for hours. <laughs> and I was following you back up through the pits of hell for like fucking eight hours. I swear oh to God. God. I swear to God, I followed you down at the, there at like 11 in the morning. And I came back up at five. One, and one, eight. Eight. one yeah. eight. <laughs> And then we surfaced <laughs> at the Hilton. That is hyperbole, but <laughs> we have that. We'll, we won't let the truth get in the way of a good story. I, I, I like the idea that you were, for some reason, yeah, I like the idea the too. Bottom, <laughs> the of Dude, yeah. Stuck there. Portlandia could do a really good Nam skit. Oh my god! Oh That's, my god! You know, I think I think that we could put together a group of people that could just share some Nam experiences. And then we could put that into action and, and make make the ultimate Nam YouTube sketch that goes viral. Oh, I bet we could. <laughs> dude, one thing that happened to us, were you with us when this happened that Morgan Morgan Agron played like a Soul Niger medley? No, I Morgan Agron, we were at night. some guitar yeah. company. It was the Nam before the last Nam. Yeah. We were yeah. at some no, guitar rem- company's remember- night. Yeah. It was like yeah. mayonnaise or whatever. May- mayonnaise. It mayonnaise. was mayonnaise. Yeah. mayonnaise guitars. Yeah, 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 it was mayonnaise guitars. Was and mayonnaise. we walked in there. And honestly, it didn't seem that cool. And then we walked in. The free drinks that they had were just like 
eight dollar handles of the cheapest vodka that you Which could ever still have. Cool. Still cool. It was great. It was great. It was great. But it was great. But there's like a tier cool. level and there's the level of like you have a bartender, like the party we were talking about earlier, and then there's the level of mayonnaise guitars where it was just handles of vodka and you could pour I'm still not mad at that. pour as I'm you wish. I'm not mad at that. But That's sick. so we were just hanging out for a while and eventually our friend Justin who's in no, the We were outside. We were outside, out back. And Zach Oren. Zach Oren. But Justin McKinney was in there as well. Justin McKinney texted Zach and was like, Soul hey, Niger. dude, just so you know, like Morgan Egren's on stage. He's about to play Soul Niger with some random guy. Yeah. And, and we ran we were like, in Fuck, there. what? And then and so Zach was like, hey, you guys, we should probably go inside. Morgan Egren's about to play. And yeah. we're like, what? It was just some random, like, this guy was like, hey, like Morgan Egren was at a little party. And they had a drum set and a guitar. Yeah. And he was like, hey, I know how to play the medley. Like, you yeah. want to play it with yeah. me? I remember, I remember Morgan telling me this story after. <clears throat> yeah. Because I linked up with you guys. We were all actually together at the same time. And, um, yeah, Morgan was like, I had the guy play it beforehand just to make sure that he knew. What he was <laughs> yeah. I didn't know Wait, that. So he knew he was going to break out into the Soul Niger medley? Yeah, because he's like, he just just show it, show it to me like a little bit, like just so I know, like you know what you're doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he showed him, and he was like, okay, you know enough. And he's like, he only got one part wrong. <laughs> yeah, but it was like, sick. It was, was a, it was like a dream come true. The it was fact that fucking amazing. Morgan remembers that part is psychopathic. Yeah, yeah. but he like, plays it all the time on the internet. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. You know what? You're right. You're right because I saw him play that shit live too when I was living at our pad. I went, me and Gil watched, uh, me and Gil Sharon. I took the subway from fucking Keen's, the Keen, Keen dungeon. What's up with Gil Sharon? I don't know that guy. I've never heard him play. I just know his name. Like, I've he's heard his name, dude. He was playing for Dillinger for a while. He was like, I know that. For that. And then he played with Marilyn Manson. Okay. And then like, yeah, now, now he's, he played for the, he played drums on the last John Wick movie. He's just killing it now. He's he's nice. and he's a man. But um, it's like a studio. Yeah, we, we, we watched uh, a Morgan Clinic. I remember him playing that at the end. It was like the moment where legit all the fucking kids from Llama like were asking him right before he started. <clears> he was like, "You guys, are you, are you gonna play the Soul Night?" He's like, yeah. "Yes, I'll play it at the end." You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's I like actually remember his. that. I didn't go to that clinic. Uh, I regret it to this day. Yeah, yeah. Didn't yeah. it? Were you even? I, think I was in. Been, no, no, out. we we no, we lived at. We lived together, and you were like, yeah. "I'm going to this clinic," and I was like, "I'm not going to go." What? Wait, wait, Morgan. <laughs> Morgan had a clinic. Yeah, yeah. And when you know we lived with Keen and go? with Raiden. What? You know why you guys didn't go is because Naveen was done with drums at that point. Yeah, um, I was done. I was over was, it. He wasn't trying to see drums. No, I didn't want to. I didn't like, want well, it to yeah, bring that's up what, any that's memories. That's what you do yeah. when you like pretend to be over yeah. something. Yeah. You're yeah, like, I'm not gonna like, open that wound, dude. I'll tell like, you whatever. right now, man. I there's actually if you went back like super far on my Instagram, like when we moved back to my mom's to Santa Cruz, I like listened to Soul Niger, and I oh. made a post, and I was like. Forgive me for my sins. Like, damn, I'm whack. <laughs> and uh, I, I listened to this metal. album, and I've come to my senses. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna like start a metal band again. A lot of people have that <laughs> moment. A lot of yeah, people yeah, have the moment where they're like, fuck metal. I know, but yeah. if you listen to Soul Niger, you can't have that moment. You're like, all right, I'm. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've done wrong. I've, I've done wrong I'm, in my life. Yeah, I'm like quietly fuck metal, but not really. You know what I mean? Like, I'll still play in metal bands yeah. and shit, but like. But you've I never like d devoted like a denounced huge... metal. Yeah, no, not not 100. percent Like maybe for a little while when I was playing in Hey Adam. Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck. Oh. We, right, we, we saw Hey that. Adam live. Dude, I remember. Okay, wait. I gotta turn. What's up with Hey Adam? Two, two seconds. Pause. All right, I have to <laughs> run. To, yeah, I gotta run to the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, AC. Well, I'll be right. Oh, back. Chitty, you're about to fucking break. This. All right, it's an NK solo on the mics. All right, so both my guests have gone to the bathroom, and I'm here solo. And this is what it would be like to have a Naveen podcast only. It's pretty much the best podcast that you can ever have. 
And, uh, oh shit, we got Brandon's back, apparently. Maybe. Um, but. All right. Oh, you're back. And we're back. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Um, I remember getting very bad careers. What I thought was very bad career advice at the time, like, all right, this is very convoluted and like very confusing looking back on it. And at the time I thought it was good advice, but like shortly after I thought it was bad advice, Casey, like I was talking to Diego rest in peace yeah. from uh, volumes. Right. And, um, and they were like not happy with the guy who was playing with them. Who was like filling in. For and, volumes. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, like, I should play in volumes. Like, I started talking to Diego. He's like, come over. Like, let's let's hook it up. Like, do this. Do, like, a video of wormholes, whatever. I was like, okay, great. And then even started hanging with Diego after that and, like, kind of building this friendship. And then I was telling Casey, my friend Casey at the time, one day, yeah. hey, <laughs> I'm going to go play. I think I'm going to go play with volumes. And he's yeah. like, no, you shouldn't do that. He's like, you should just join Hey Adam and make like a lot of money because he's going to be a pop band and like you guys are going to go on tour and like this and that, blah, blah, blah. And like, you don't want to be in a metal band that doesn't make any money and is in a van, blah, blah, blah. Not- I know, but you shouldn't have listened to Casey. That guy's out of his like, mind. <laughs> he totally was. And so I was like, um, yeah, sure. That sounds like a good idea. I should do that. And then shortly after, volumes like started blowing up hardcore. They had like that album that he even guessed it on. I was like, whoa, like what the fuck, dude? You sabotaged me. Yeah, no, you got sabotaged. But then after the fact, now looking back on it, like I'm really glad that that's how things went because like I'm like I'm happy with my journey. I'm really happy with where I am right now. Like this is where I want to be, and it wouldn't be I wouldn't be there if I hadn't made all these. Choices. If I hadn't had all these That's what I say, failures, successes, <clears throat> you name it, you know what I mean. That's kind of part of life and, and learning. I know. And I, like, when I was was gonna join volumes, but <laughs> Casey told me that I shouldn't. And really? I thought that was a good idea. Casey said time. to join Hey Adam. Well, K- Casey also quit Periphery. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because so. he can't tour. He couldn't tour. Why That's though? Because he's a weirdo. Yeah, I love. K- I hope this doesn't get back to him. But if it does, whatever, I mean, he knows it. He knows it. He's not going to listen to this. I love Casey, too, but one time he sold me Molly as, like, 5 HTP, or he sold me, like, 5 HTP or something. No, dude, it was fucking, it was bath salts. Bath salts as Molly. Is that when you guys did bath salts with Hob and, like, you guys all (laughs) flipped out really hardcore? (laughs) Yes. Oh, my God. Casey would do that dumbass shit. Okay. We're, we're not going to make this the hate on Casey now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I actually love Casey. And yeah, here's the too. thing is that Casey does not get the credit he deserves, which is that uh, he, he started the, it. the periphery vocal style it. was created yep. by Casey Sable. 100%. Like 100% yeah. Yeah. created. He is the reason that Spencer Sotelo yeah. sounds the way he, he does. He told me the story. He was like, yeah. I'm, I went to Misha and I was like, dude, I want to do vocals on your music, but yeah. I'm going to sing. Yeah. Like all of that. It was his idea. All like that the gent style. thing was his Dude, idea. Casey Sable, Casey yeah. Sable came up with Jen. He did. He really yeah. did. And I'm sure nobody I, knows that. Dude, no, I, I have literally all zero friends. hate all in my heart. I love too. Casey. I think he's an amazing vocalist. I do too. And I, I make fun of him relentlessly to his face too. Yeah, so like of course. I'm not yeah. as worried about it, but I just haven't seen him in a while. So I would feel a little bit bad you know, talking all this uh, mess on him. But yeah, he's a very <laughs> idiosyncratic character. He eats like a five-year-old. Like he only eats like hamburgers with like cheese and ketchup only or like yeah, steak yeah. or like whatever, pizza, you know, mac and cheese. Like there's only like a couple things he can eat. Um, like That's kind of legit. goes to the same though. bars, same things like every night. Yep. One of the most talented guys I know. Super talented, amazing, freakishly talented vocalist. Yeah, uh, got freakishly producer. talented. Yeah, weird yeah. Guy. but yeah, he's a fucking weirdo. It's like yeah, we're talking weird. about. It's the fine line between genius and insanity. We all, Damn we all straight, know. Dude. We all have that That's genius thing, ass like, friend. Yeah, where we're like this guy's fun. I'm so glad I'm not that talented because I'm glad I'm not that. Dude, weird. Like, I remember. Just, I remember Casey's sense. apartment was like. Super weird. We always went there to party, but he had a vocal booth in his fucking bedroom yeah. in his apartment. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, he's yeah. all he's always been like such a, a genius, but also crazy. I just think about all the girls that I banged on his couch. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure <laughs> you banged. Some... Got destroyed. Dude, I. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, mm-hmm. his apartment. I remember, like, we would start every party at Casey's apartment. Yeah. Like, we would just be. Because he lived shit, on Hollywood Boulevard. Faced. He lived on Hollywood Boulevard. Totally shit faced. And, and then yeah, we would go to that bar. What's the name of that bar? The like Angels and Kings. Oh, dude. Yeah. I one time was passed out in the Angels and Kings bathroom. And like, I, 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 this. I, yeah, I don't know what happened, you. but you helped me. Yeah, dude, I was I passed think. out in the bathroom and people had been like knocking yeah. on the bathroom door for what seemed like five minutes. And yeah. they were like, what the fuck you know, is going on? Honestly, everybody has been in that position in the Angels and Kings at yeah. one point. Like, <laughs> dude, all of totally. our, like, I remember being in this, it was the, probably the same exact thing where you were holding my hair. And I was fucking puking, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I remember having to keep doors locked and people just pounding, people being pissed because they want to do cocaine or shit like that. And you're just puking, trying yeah. to fucking get your shit together for the next fucking round. That's oh, what happens God. in LA when you're like 21 years old. I was tw- I was <laughs> so, 21, yeah. 22, and that's yeah. like, LA is crazy yeah, when yeah, you're 21, crazy, 22. Right? And, and you move and from Iowa. Friends. Iowa is one of the drunkest states in the entire country. And then you move from there to, or where? ever to you lived in texas right before you lived in la yeah it blew it well for me the craziest thing was you know and actually i honestly have casey to thank for so many of my connections at, yeah, at the yeah. time you know what i mean because justin gosnell yeah. who's with the periphery crew yeah introduced me to casey i introduced then, you yeah. to casey you motherfucker no no no, no I, did. Did. I did i did mm. No, because I remember the first day I moved to L.A., I met Casey. No, I, remember I introduced you, and it was like, oh, dang, Raynan and Casey hit it off. They're like best buds. No, no. And then for a while, you guys from. were not fr- chill. It's a war yeah. about who introduced okay. him. That's, remember that's for a while, you guys were not chill. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was kind of annoying. Yeah, sure. I remember. There's a little. Like there's a period of time when you guys weren't friends, and yeah. I was like, "Dang." I but guess that's I'm... what I'm saying is that was the first time I met him was through Justin. Justin introduced him. That's why I didn't like him. I was like, oh, "He's kind of annoying." Whatever. I don't think so. I think and, he met and him. And then me. later on, you you were like, "Yeah, I'm homies with Casey. Like, we should go hang out with them." And I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." So <laughs> we we all hung out. Dude, we were um, oh, there all the time. There's two great stories from this. Uh-oh. One is the time when. I had just moved back to LA. I know I you're living the first with, time we hung out in LA. The first time. Uh, yes, yeah. this is what we're talking about. Was I there? there? No, it was, I was, no, uh, no you there. were on the phone. This is this is all part of the great story, right? Um, so I'm staying at John Tempesta's house. Yep. The drummer of Rob Zombie, the cult yep. white zombie. Testament. No, okay. So you're like, hey, Damn. you're like, hey, Naveen, just just cruise over here. So I drove my busted ass minivan. That's what I don't like about LA. LA. That's what I don't like about LA. Your friend will have you driving your like shitty car from 1973 over to the drummer of Ariana Grande's house. And nobody was there. No, over to Ariana Grande herself's house. And you're like, dude, the fuck? That's how it goes. So nobody was there. No, Raynan's like, hey, you should just cruise over here. I cruised over there. And then I think somehow, I don't know, we. I'm I don't housed, know if I'm I drove in this place. Wait, 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 wait. Did I, I drive I from John yes, Tempesta's yes. house to? Because we went to Angels and Kings. Yeah. Uh, who who is John Angels, Tempesta uh, again? So John Tempesta played drums for Rob Zombie. Now he plays for the Cult. He used to play for uh, Testament as well, but he played on all oh, the shit. iconic White Zombie and Rob Zombie stuff. Okay, like so same. like the name all of song. The stuff. Name Hell, of Billy song. Deluxe, all the all the shit that we know, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, so and legit like. There's a picture of his MTV music video award, you know what I mean? Like the Moon Man and shit yeah. like, in his fucking like room. We're just like, whoa, dude. So yeah, I'm uh Johnny's you like saw yeah, Moon you, yeah. you saw yeah, Moon Man? Yeah. Yes. We said I think he sent you a picture. So yeah, we, I definitely did. We, we uh what? he comes over. I'm like, yeah, dude, I, like Johnny's let me stay at his house. Like it's sick. Like I mean, he's just let me stay for a week. He's on tour with the cult, so I'm just fucking living it up. Come over, we'll grill. So we get like some chicken thighs. Yeah, I was like, I'm there, dude. Fuck that. Salad. The pea salad. Some dude. Pea salad. salad bro. Pea salad, dude. And we have some fucking <laughs> some beers. That's when pea salad was coined. We were just like, man, pea salad pea is salad, a fucking dude. base. Best thing. I think we ate afterwards. Um, yeah, yeah, so no. We went, we went we and party invited, and then we came back and we ate we got pea invited salad. invited by the guys from Human Abstract. They yep. were having a tour kickoff party yep. at Angels and Kings. And like Naveen knew what was going on. I was like, sweet, let's go. 
we all rode down, we hang out, we meet these guys. It's like, okay, this is, you know, uh, like I got introduced to all the human abstract guys that, that night, you know, and yep. awesome time. Cheney, you were calling and a little bit weirded out and jealous at the time because oh. you didn't know who I was. Oh. Like, I was jealous of you. Like, you're like, who's Rain? I Wait, I was jealous being, of you. Na- yeah, Naveen had to do some, uh, like, some fi- some putting out of the fire. What is it? What is it? Some damage control. <laughs> You just heard you're damn straight, dude. I was like, who the fuck is raining? How dare you? You How dare you? I don't think you knew it was a guy at first. I was like, who's raining? Is she hot? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then and then the moon's all like that's amazing. My buddy raining, like blah blah blah. He's like, he's raining. And I'm like, hi, Jamie. Like I I remember talking to you on speakerphone. Yeah, dude, I remember that. That's fucking amazing. That is a Right after you were like, I guess Rain's pretty cool, and then like, and then, yeah, we like met shortly afterwards. Dude, um, I don't remember that happening at all. Oh, I totally that's remember a, it. That's dude. incredible. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, was I guess Raynan's because I also remember telling her. I guess Raynan like, is like. I was like, cool. yeah, we're e- we're eating pea salad, and, and she's I was like, like, what the fuck is pea salad? Like, How, like, dare like, How dare you eat his eat that pea salad? No, she was like, oh, how dare you eat his? She was like, oh, it's like pea, like with peas, like P E A. And I was like, no, 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 potato no, salad. Breathe. Dude, you Why also you had breathe? this other thing when we lived together. You said, what was the saying? The juice is loose. Yeah, you're like, the juice is loose. And we're like, fuck, Rainin. Okay, like, the is juice that? is loose, Rainin. Fuck. But then dude. we learned later After, on. After like the yeah. 30th time, because Naveen would be grilling chicken and I was vegetarian at the time. And he would like grill my shit, you know, and you'd be like, oh, the juice is loose. And I'd be like, uh, okay, Rainin, the juice is loose, dude. I get it. And then like two years later, we heard, we watched an OJ Simpson documentary. Yeah. And it was the juice is loose. <laughs> and so we were like, talking about how the juice is loose. And we were like, dude, Rainin, Rainin is on the, some shit, yeah, dude. Ahead of the curve. <laughs> you were so ahead of it. I can't believe it. He oh, knew the man. catchphrases. From we, like the- we seriously looked at each other, made eye contact. And we were like, Oh, we were like, oh, he so wasn't amazing. making up the juices loose. Yeah. He was like talking about. <laughs> it's, a, it's a legit thing. Well, you know what? It's a legit thing for two reasons. Because it's OJ and then it's also Starburst. The oh, oh, he's got okay. two different fucking. Hey, Rain, and I have a question because I remember this. Like when we lived together, did I have to buy you weed? Yes, because I didn't have a weed card. You didn't have a weed card. I remember I that, man. Yeah, I remember you always had to buy me weed, and uh, your shop was, like, super sketch. Yep. <laughs> and, like, yep. You had to drive hella far because it was the only place that had your <laughs> your medical card it, Dude, license. it's so true. We that place all, was we sketchy. We were all so broke that we couldn't, like, go get a new weed card. Like, now when I think about this stuff, it just makes me laugh so hard. I know. Like, How much is a weed like, card? Like a hundred dollars or something. Not only that, but like you don't even need them anymore, which is the fucking funniest thing. At the time, I think I remember buying mine for like thirty-five or forty-five bucks. Like I got a really good deal. But I remember hearing about people who spent like one hundred and twenty because it was just a scam. You know what I mean? Like people, it would you would go into this urgent care center and they would tap your knee a couple times, whatever. Okay, dude, you know, cough, right? Yep. Use your card. Yep, that's how it was for me. Like Kalala. Cause we like when we, when I first moved to LA animals lived together and Kalala lived there as well. And when they were on tour, she took me to get my LA license and my medical card because you had to have an LA license or, you know, a California license to get a medical card. And, and I went into the dude, it was so weird because it was just like a month after I had moved to LA and she took me into the doctor's office and he was like, okay, so what's wrong with you? It was this Indian guy. And he was like, okay, so what's wrong with you? And I was like, well, you know, I get period cramps. And he was like, okay, I'm going to need you to provide me with a little more information in order to get you a weed card. So he was like, do you have knee pain? Yep. Do you have yes. uh, wow. muscle I spasms? Oh, wow. And I was like, yeah, I have all of these. So he filled yeah. me out for all of them. And then I got to go to that that dispensary that I took you to, man. And you pull up out back and it's like they have... Uh, Is that like AA or whatever? Something A, AAA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, it was like triple A weed in Burbank. And you pull up and they have bars on the windows. It's like a fucking jail, man. And they have security guards sad. out back. And you walk in and you, you go in and you order your weed. And back then it was like the Wild West because when shit wasn't recreational, you would get like a million milligrams of weed at a time. 
So I remember going <laughs> in my... Like, I remember asking, like, hey, like, I want some edibles. And you're like, mm, my place doesn't really, like, do edibles very well. And then you came and, like, brought some one day. And you were like, here. And they were, like, homemade. Like, you, they did. Yeah, they're they were, homemade. Like, they, they were like, homemade. Yeah. Yep. Just like, here's here's your edible and they just like hand it to you over the fucking yeah. body. like it's so funny dude i love oh what a great time but i, I rem- remember like yeah i remember just coming home and smoking we, like that was when i really started to become uh, a more of a regular stoner i was already on my way but then like living with you and then it was just like it was next level but i remember like <laughs> you that yeah. happens when people are around me yeah, your band had come to visit at the time. Oh, the yeah. System, system. Yep. Yeah, dude. Hanging with Stinky Tanner. <laughs> I know, Stinky Tanner. <laughs> no longer Stinky Tanner. Good for him, dude. I love it. Yeah. Have you hung, you? No. You Have you hung out with him? Yeah, I hung out with him a couple of years ago. He came when he was like, he went to some Indian retreat, went all fucking Naveen. Dude, no, fucking, like, Tanner, that, Tanner yeah. is the original. Honestly, it's like he went all Tanner. Tanner like yeah. moved to India and shit. Yeah. He, yeah. He, he, he's like way into it. He went and stayed on this like, and so before he went out there um, in like San Diego, he went and stayed on my couch for like a couple of days. And yeah, I remember that, I remember that. yeah, yeah, good times. Man. That was a while ago, though. That was a while ago. Yeah, dude. Oh yeah. man, I I remember like not even being able to, not even being able to afford Jack in the Box, and you guys like chipping in on some tacos for your boy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you're you're <laughs> thirty now. Thirty, about to be thirty-one in like two yeah. weeks. That's Holy so shit. young. Yeah. But that still makes me <laughs> feel old, even though I'm only 32. It's like, you know, yeah. you feel like my, you're like my little brother. Oh my so God. it's, it's only, like, only, so only I feel 30, old. Huh? Only 30, huh? But that's, 30. that is crazy. <laughs> like Tanner came out to stay. He stayed on the couch for, I think, a month yeah, while a he tracked time, guitars. Dude. And we all, we watched Kane's Dogs. Oh, those fucking place. dogs, dude. I, <laughs> dogs. I'm a nice guy, dude. I'm like vegetarian, dude. Dogs. I like love animals and stuff, but those animals, I was ready to take <laughs> those things out, those dude. Dogs so much, oh, I was dude. ready to take those fucking dogs out, dude. They're. <laughs> she was ready to stop. I will say, something <laughs> did happen. Like when everybody was gone, like Cheney went somewhere yeah. like to <laughs> Iowa or something or maybe systems was, was going to yes. do a tour yeah. Yeah. and you were gone and Keen was gone and Keen it was, was on summer slaughter me. most of the time when we it lived was together. just yeah. me and those two little teacup chawas and you bonded we bonded dude <laughs> I remember. We I remember bonded. you had Dude, that revelation. Kind of we bonded. Cute. Like they, they, they would like revelation. at night they would come up to me and be like, "Oh, you know, like they didn't they didn't talk obviously, but what they were saying <laughs> to me was like, like, hey, is it cool if we cuddle with? Like, we need to cuddle with somebody, so it's got to be yeah. you. Is that chill? Yeah. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> all right, all right. Get and I would like here. wake up with like cuddling them and stuff, and I was like, you little yeah. fuckers, dude. You, all right, whatever. And then <laughs> after that, I was like cool with them. I know. I fell in love yeah. with those little teacup. But chairs. they were horrible. To be fair, yeah, they're horrible. They, you know, they pissed everywhere. But not their fault, dude. If not someone their fault. walked not their in the door at our house, they would just pee on the yeah, ground. They, submiss- they had submissive urination yeah. syndrome or whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah. and they, they, would they would be just... the loudest barking, like uh, the shriek, so annoying, the shrieking bro. bark was just insane. It was brutal, and you had to like watch out where you walked because, like, you would legit just like they would come up Fresh. to you and like be quiet. Yeah. Oh yeah, like they would they would only be quiet when you don't need them to be quiet. Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? Right. Loud as fuck when everybody's just trying to step on. Whoa! Like, <laughs> yeah. Fuck, dude. But, I remember I mean, just like I remember that that thing though. I was like, you know what? I don't know. They're all right, I guess. Whatever. That was such <laughs> a funny time. I, there's dude. a picture of me and like Bambi that yes. comes up every year. So yeah. I'm always just kind of reminded really? of those times. Yeah. Dude, remember when homeboy Doug brought over the fucking spice? No, what was it? It wasn't uh, spice. We had salvia. Uh, First of I all. I can't forget, Rainin. You may- <laughs> Before that, you- we were all smoking spice. Like, br- I remember Brandon Paddock or whatever was, like, trying to quit weed. So he had spice. <laughs> and so he, like, rolled that better? the spice <laughs> We all fucking hit these spice. We, we all hit this spice. And I remember like the fifth or sixth time I did it, I was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, this is fucked up. Like, I started to see like spirals and shit. I was like, this is not cool. Spice. And then um, 
I, I don't know if I remember personally ever doing any spice. I remember doing some other because you came we back from like Salvia. warped tour. Okay, we did Salvia and you oh, came no. back from warp tour and you're like born of Osiris gave me this two CI I two CI I remember that. Yeah. Actually, I'll never forget that. That was oh that's an that's another yeah, absolutely unforgettable yeah. night. But yeah. the You Salvia showed up at like one AM. Like, yeah. hey, I got this Did insane. Really? Yes. You showed up at like 1 a.m. and you're like, hey, and guys. You're like, I have 2CI. I, I got this crazy thing called 2CI. You want to do it? And, and I was we're like, like, and we're like yeah. all right, let's do it. Yeah. Fuck it. And then we sat in so our weird. room. We sat, all three of us sat side by side in our bedroom. And Iggy walked into our bedroom. And I remember him just looking like a Lisa Frank the illustration. Cat. The cat. Exactly. Like, I was yeah. like, yeah. Iggy like is lion. the. Yeah, yeah, dude. He looked like a little lion. Like, he had yeah. a mane and, like, his tail he even had, like, the lion puff. <laughs> but he was all rainbow and shit. Yes. And I was like, whoa, Iggy's fucking rules right now. You know yeah. what the total bummer of that was? You coming into my room at, like, 9 a.m., like, <laughs> hey, dude, Naveen. Yes. I need oh, you to give me a ride to work. And I was like, this motherfucker, at dude. At 9 a.m.? Yeah, like, yes. yeah, 9 a.m. when you stayed up till that. 6 or 7. What's actually worse about that, that is that Rainin had to work at 9 a.m. After, after we had just Holy done shit. the we had just done the Lisa Frank drug. Now you're like, you need to drive me to, what's that little fucking community that called down there? Dude, Marina like, Del Rey. So Marina Del Rey. Del Rey. Yeah. And I'm like, Marina Marie Del Rey, seriously, dude? And I was like, that's 100 miles this away. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a solid like that's a solid fucking friend though dude you gotta admit i know that's, that's real well i already knew we were brothers so i wasn't worried because i was like it. all right another moment i got that you dude. Like, Fuck. i got I knew, you i knew you hated me for it but i knew it was just like this yeah. is a thing that we had but to i would do that and i would do it again to be, to yeah. be fair if you called yeah. me up tonight and you were like hey you need to t I'll, I'll do I it i gotta go to marina sure. and, Del Rey. and same brother you know I, you both you guys know that you know i know um and you've done some favors for me that are pretty legit that i that's how I it could, goes, but I, we don't, say, I don't yeah. even think about it. You know what I mean? I, don't even, I just think about like the awesome friendship that we've had, you know, with the three of us. Of and um, so the way the two CI thing, I, I have to get that. Out. <laughs> yeah. it's really fucking amazing. And the so, salvia, because I, I have a salvia. thing. We'll get to both of them. All right. So two, two I think there CI, was a DMT. No, was there no, a DMT? We didn't no, do no, DMT. DMT. No, we never did. The beans just throw it. So it's 2CI. Naveen's, like, got, Naveen's yeah. like, what about the what meth? Drugs, what drugs have we done? Heroin? Yeah. Oh my Crack? God, yeah. No, you know what's weird about me is I've done like all kinds of real weird like designer, like fake drugs. Yeah. But yeah. not that That's many, I mean, not that many straight up ones. Well, I don't feel That's like they're that. They're hang out in the technical metal. The technical <laughs> Dude, metal but there metal are, like there designer. also aren't as many people who like have had an experience with bath salts because when we did them, it was way before anyone had ever forward, heard yeah. of bath yes. salts. And I know I've it done, sounds but, silly I've that we did twice. them, but it was just like a weird night with this band Dead Letter Circus. And, you know, I did a. There were a bunch of mushroom. I, I don't know. It was just a fucked up night. So anyway, you know? so yeah, anyway we'll, let's get back anyway, to the, back to the night. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I had met Cameron at that work tour, uh, Cameron Loesch, and yeah. he like was, they were about to go, I think to Mexico or somewhere where he's like, Hey bro, like I need to get rid of this 2CI. Honestly, like, cause he just, also he who's ever even heard of that? No I one. Know, he, I hadn't he heard of it me, until that night. Me neither. Me neither. He's like, it's a synthetic acid. And he's like, it's fine. I mean, I've been doing it. I'm okay. And he was like, is What's he okay though? about it? Is it purely <laughs> We're going to have to have Cameron on and ask him <laughs> if he's okay. Yeah, Cameron is one of the most intelligent musicians out there. Though. Yeah, he's amazing. No, I think he would say, I'm not okay like that Michael Chemical Romance song. Yeah. That's that, That's what his response would be. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so he's like, do you want to do something? I'm like, yeah, I'm not driving. Like, Adam drove me there, you know what I mean? I'm just hanging out, smoking, smoking weed, and I'm like, this guy's I'll take this juicy shit, whatever, so I'm taking it. Fucking Bozio drug jeans. Because my... I take this stuff at, like, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It doesn't kick in until, like, 9, 10, like, ow, several hours later. He's, like, fucking tripping. He's, like, feeling it. You know what I mean? I'm, like, yeah, I'm waiting to feel this shit. I'm hearing an echo. Are you dead? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little break. I'm hey, one breaking second, Raiden. You're breaking up kind of hard. Is it my mic? I don't know. No, I don't think so. It might be the internet connection. 
This is how pro we are. Hello? One second. Hello, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's going all... It sounds cool, but not like for a I know, it sounded like a really cool song. to talk about it too, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the government. <laughs> it's yeah. shot. It's like, oh, we're shutting this shit down. One second. Here, I guess you could rejoin... Should he rejoin? You want to rejoin yeah, the rejoin. Zoom? Yeah, rejoin. Rejoin the Zoom here. I'm going to end it. All right. We're here, not with Rainin. We're Sad. here and we're fear free. We're also like two hours, 12 minutes deep. Who cares, Should man? Let's keep it going. This yeah, is I'm going to keep it going. I'm down. Not opposed. Going. Tell him to rejoin. Actually, Suppose we could cut it out. I'm not going to cut this out, dude. Fuck it. Fuck this. Don't cut it out. Don't, Don't cut, cut it, it out. out! Does anybody listen past two hours? They might. If you do, you should comment. Because that's amazing. Here, I'll do a new video real quick. Do, do, do. Run this theme song again. This is the Cheney Crab Podcast. <laughs> Just keep it going. Longest episode ever. This is the Cop Crab Podcast. I'm Crabby Crab. Let's pretend like we're doing another podcast. Alright, it's a copper crab first. The podcast has completely fallen apart. <laughs> and we're desperately trying to get our guest back on the show. <laughs> Please come back. <laughs> it's completely shot. <laughs> and we suck. Wow. So, Cheney.